Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode with your favorite ladies from Petty Party Podcast. We are finally checking in again from the studio. It's just Nick. Hey y'all, it's your girl Immaculate coming out the set. What's good, everybody? Hey everyone, it is your girl Jory Alia. And it's your girl Michelle, aka Egypt if you nasty. You know they say the best for last. Well, technically they didn't save me for last because if Crystal was here, she'd be last, but you know, still mm-hmm. counts. <laughs> I am so excited to be back in the studio with y'all. I feel like it's been like a while, for real. Girls was jet setting across the world. Uh, we all oh, were jet setting. It's been a, a while. Yeah, it's been okay. a while. A I month. was going to say, we're, I mean, it hasn't been, but you're right, it's been a month. Yeah. Literally. Did y'all miss us? We um, recently got to all travel as a group mm-hmm. to Spain mm-hmm. uh, for Crystal's birthday. And y'all, that was an experience. That was an experience. <laughs> a crazy, Ooh. crazy experience. But we had a really good time. I haven't recovered. And you haven't recovered yet? I mean, I'm still recovering, but no, I have not recovered. You know what? I kind of forget that it was only like two weeks ago, and I feel like I still am kind of yeah. like, uh, mm-hmm. trying to get back into the so groove of things, get back. get back to reality, you know? No, it feels weird. Even people be trying to invite me out places, and I'm like, dead. To when the I streets. tell you I do not have, nothing in me wants to be outside. like That mm-hmm. part. Like, I'm good. Like, um, I'll see y'all in November. Before we keep going, y'all, stop everything you're doing and subscribe right now. Mm-hmm. Click the subscribe button. And also, y'all, we want to give a little toast because, you know, your favorite ladies done reached 10,000 followers on Instagram. So we're going to do a little toast to success and more success to come. Shout out to Petty Party Podcast. What's good? Ooh, yes. Ooh, Thank y'all so much. Thank you for following us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok youtube honestly like the love has been so real the hate has been real too but we love that too um but yeah shout out to y'all for real like we are on a roll you know they say hate is just what love and denial so (laughs) haters are my motivators so keep on hating I take it. At one point, I was like, "Are we the world's most hated podcast?" No, I still say that because these comments have just been like just. Yeah, yeah. And some of y'all be having a conversation with yourself. Like, y'all didn't even watch the video, clearly. Y'all just <laughs> it, came to comment and yeah. dip. It really be the men. The men be so quick to comment. And it's like, dang, why are you in women's business? Thank you. Do but that. you know what? When I talk about this last episode, it's weird. But we like that. You know, honestly, like, men, if y'all want us to talk about something, write us. Like, send us a DM. Send us an email. Like, we would love to talk about things that y'all want to hear, you know? No, At the no. end of the day, we are women. So, we don't know what y'all are thinking. Anyway, now let's switch gears to Moto, Mind of the Other. Wow, y'all. Stop. Congratulations. Oh, Um, she got it right. She did. She did. (laughs) That's what 10K will do to you. (laughs) Got you remembering things. Okay, so. Now you know the alphabet. Girl. (laughs) So the guy I was talking to for a few months did something that was a red flag for me. So I respectfully let him know that I was no longer interested with him, in him on Monday. Last night I went to a party with a female friend. That female friend happened to know this guy and she didn't know what went on between us. So before I had a chance to stop her, she ran up to him to say hi and take shots. I walked up to the group in the club, waved to everyone because I knew people of the people he was standing with. And y'all, he was so rude to me. I had never seen that side of him before. He couldn't even just be mature and ignore me or play nice for a couple of minutes. It's not like I walked into his house or something. This is a public place in front of people who don't even know we had a thing. I'm so embarrassed. It's clear I sent something was off with him when I made the choice to cut him off. But I had no idea he was like that. What should I do? Mm. I mean, what can you do? I mean, match <sighs> energy with energy. At the end of no. the day, like men hate whenever their ego is hurt so it's a simple fact that it's a woman the woman like taking the initiative to cut him off you know so he feels like he has to be rude so i say like okay if he wants to be rude you be rude back actually ignore him make play him and make it seem like you don't even know who this man is i missed it i'm sorry um basically like she cut it like cut things off with him Mm -hmm. and so she saw him out in public update her friend Uh, yet that they're not on anymore so she had like approached him and said what's up like everything was normal mm -hmm. and like he acted so rude with her to her friend or to to her to her oh but i'm not gonna lie if i cut somebody off whether it was like amicably or not amicably like i'm just kind of just not gonna speak just because i don't ever want nobody to sit in my place and play me like that like so yeah i'm not I mean, I, i'm like that, unless, unless we discuss like okay like it'll be cool after the fact but if that wasn't a discussion like I, men have like nikki said they have very easily bruised ego so it's like i'm not even gonna put myself in position to speak to you and you act crazy like that with true. me i'm not gonna do it um i'll talk from a play the experience that has happened to me however like one thing about me i will not let someone else's character be the reason why i changed mine so i'm always gonna keep it 100 i'm always gonna be nice i'm always gonna be 
respectful. However, that person will never get that whole I'm approaching you out of, out of me anymore. Like it's clearly I don't see you no more. Like you are mm-hmm. literally nobody. I don't think you should be rude. I think you should just act accordingly. Like he don't exist in your world anymore. However, I felt you approaching him, trying to like speak and be nice and cordial. That is the right thing to do because I feel like in this world we are normalizing like being rude and aggressive on stuff that we don't need to. However, since he showed you his back like that fall back all the way like it's okay like just play it cool you don't need to fight fire with fire just play it cool says a lot about you did he really just shut see this is how he was so rude and i I I know exactly what she's talking about but is it so rude or is it just like (laughs) that's just the energy that he's he's on because it's rude to do that to a female that is i don't i don't think it's rude i feel like that's him setting a boundary i feel like and I'm going to stop saying I feel like I'm working on that, y'all. But if you you didn't say that, oh, we had a talk and we decided to be friends mm-hmm. or we grew apart. You said that you made the decision to cut this person off. And that vocabulary is very direct. Mm-hmm. So if you made a decision to cut somebody off, the next time you see them, expecting them to welcome you with open arms. What if you, okay, what if the shoe was on the other foot? What if you saw him and you did want to avoid him because, again, you cut him off and he went out of his way, made a beeline to you and mm-hmm. was all in your face? You would be acting standoffish like, boy, did I not just cut you off? Right. He's standing on the energy that he assumes you want him to be, want him to have. It's you cut me off. So we're not fooling with each other anymore. I don't have, he does not owe you niceties. He doesn't owe you a shot in the club. He doesn't owe you any kind of conversation and it's not even him being rude i mean you cut him off so i honestly mm-hmm. feel like it's been a situation where you have to kind of just stand on it a lot of times we cut men off and we still expect the relationship to remain there but it doesn't it, he doesn't owe you that relationship after mm-hmm. you cut him off he doesn't owe you that relationship at the same time like y'all are our adults and i feel like you should be Sick. able to walk into any room and be cordial with anybody no matter what like i can be beefed out with somebody but one thing i'm not going to do is like make it known in public you know what i'm saying and then it's like it's not even the fact that she was she wasn't the one who walked up to him first it was her friend you know what i'm saying so like there have been times where we like i feel like i've been out with people and y'all have walked up to people that i really am not like fooling with for that moment Mm -hmm. and it's like i have no i really have no (laughs) choice but to like kind of follow the crowd because then if i just stay over here now it really looks like i have beef with somebody Mm -hmm. but there's been plenty of times where i've cut somebody like and that's again i'm saying not like we fell off now we grew apart now we transitioned into a friendship i cut somebody off and my friend may not have known and she walks up to them and i keep my distance i'm not going to go over there because Mm -hmm. i understand that i've set that boundary where i don't fool with you on Mm -hmm. that level because you did something to make me cut you off yeah so Mm -hmm. me blurring the lines and coming up to you and acting like we're all friendly in the club just for the, just because I saw you I feel like that's fake and to him he probably thinks it's fake too you don't want to fuck with me if you see me out don't fuck with me True. and I don't feel like that's rude he doesn't he I think to um, me he doesn't have to to be friends with you true. if you cut them off. That's true. But honest, I don't know. Cause like, I mean, I we don't have to agree to disagree. Cause I, I just don't want my biggest pet peeve is when people let it be known in public. Cause it's not everyone's business. Like people should not know that you and I fell off or me and you cut it. No one should know that. I it should be a thing where it's like, wh- why are we over here sitting here letting people feel the energy of I don't fuck with you, you don't fuck with me. So we about to put out this energy of dark that's dark energy like no one wants to be around that like i get it the whole like yeah set your boundary but at the same time you should be able to set a boundary and still be respectful and respect yourself too like it shouldn't be a thing where you're going out your way to be rude to people because she flat out said he was extremely rude to her so he must have did something he probably i mean but he probably feels away but i'm thinking about me personally like when i'm out and somebody who I used to talk to is there. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'd rather not speak to them. You know what I mean? And, I'm, you know, I'm never. Honestly, she shouldn't have followed I'm her never going to fa- walk up to you and speak. But if mm-hmm. for some reason, like, we haven't be at the bar at the same time or we we're passing by, like, I, if you say hi, I'm going to say hi back. Like, that's the minimum yeah. you're going to get. But I feel like seeking somebody out, because that's happened to me before. A mm-hmm. guy I used to talk to was seeking me out. Like, I literally was running from him in the club because I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I know what you're trying to do and I don't want to talk. Like, leave me alone. So it's kind of just like, I'm I'm cool with the, like, the friendliness, but like, I'm not going out of my way to speak to I you. Think with her case she was just having manners you know you walk mm-hmm. up you walk up to people and one thing about it, i'm gonna walk up to you i'm gonna greet everybody mm-hmm. unless <laughs> you know something has transpired where you know you understand why i can't greet you but i can <laughs> greet everybody else around you you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying and she didn't under she didn't know that that's how it's gonna be so I, i'm not gonna fault her too much because it's like so what was her overall question like she what was like she what should she do like i mean just per- yeah, now you, that you know that that's you how beginning. he's gonna act then just don't speak to him in public like he showed you <laughs> that's, that's how yeah. he's gonna act you like that's, have to that's stand all you on can it. do you have to because mm-hmm. honestly you're just gonna keep playing yourself every time because mm-hmm. trust me Men know. Not as in unison. Men, no, but I'm just <laughs> saying, men know when they when they have a nice girl that's never going to be mean. It's like, 
they gonna play with your top for real. Oh, so men will definitely it. take advantage of y'all nice. Yeah, like she should will. hate me, but she's right there with open arms. Why she always smiling? Oh, oh mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. and his ego's probably bruised too. So I'm sure he's right. probably just like, and watch her. I bet you she's gonna come <laughs> over here and try to get a shot. She see me in the section. She see I'm lit. Now she wanna walk over here, and here you go. No, no shade. Yeah, but, yeah. Yo, yeah. first of all. Her friend didn't know. No, no, but as my friend, let me walk up to my nigga. What are you? you why know are you crazy? Walk, like, can I tell? When I heard that part, I was like, I'm like, not your friend made not a beeline. Running to my man and his friends. Are you okay? Because I feel like even if you're out and about <laughs> you with your okay? homegirl and you see the nigga she talks to, you're like, hey, so and so was over there. Like yeah, I feel like that. Like, I, girl, come on. I feel like it's a conversation where like it's pointed out, and if yeah. that person who fucks with that person wants to go over there, then we're gonna go. Yeah. But I, I, you have no reason you making to, your way yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like you need to have a conversation that. with your homegirl. Like cause... okay, Dora, trying to explore girl. the whole room. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, we gonna have to speak on her friend. Yeah, her friend. I don't know what. Maybe. She's talking to one of his friends. That's why she felt like she can go over there. That's but true. Sometimes that's what yeah, it be. Yeah. But. No, honestly. But then it's at the same time, <laughs> you kind of have to, you need to, honestly, it's not saying you have to match energy, but Sus it's kind of like, you need but to respect is, everything. This is why I, mean? I am so anti, like, one friend group, one girlfriend group <laughs> talking to another male friend group. Girl. I am just not for it <laughs> yeah, anymore. I, why not? <laughs> it just never Scarred. works out. Like because Scarred. first off, not everyone in those two groups are going to work out, nope. and like <laughs> you know, one to two <laughs> might. But yeah. then next thing you know, like the problems from the people that didn't work out it are starts, pushed on the people that did mm-hmm. work out, and then vice versa. And it and just before ends up being, you know, y'all in a competition that you didn't know you signed up for, and it's like, <laughs> dang, okay. sounds like y'all speaking from experience. <laughs> I'm just Let saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. Person. I'm just saying. I don't. I, don't I have to agree with from? Nikki. I, I don't do the whole talking to friend groups because that's a problem. Like coming from experience, like that's a big problem. It that's a major it. red flag for me. <laughs> like one of your friends, I like my homegirl. Okay, just count me out. Cause like. <laughs> Uh-uh. I'm not because it's just like if I was there first then no. it takes the right people to handle that because like some people don't know how to handle it and it ruins the experience for everyone because like everyone could be cool and it's that one person who can't handle it now they ruin it for everybody I don't even not everyone can I mean but each other. I feel like that extends even past like a friend group situation like I feel like even when like you meet somebody and maybe you meet them through your friend. Like, I hate that situation because I feel like the friend always needs to be in a third party to your relationship. You and the dude are going through something. He's reaching out to your friend to discuss, dang, why Joy tripping? No, remove. I don't like that. Yeah, It's between me and you. Don't reach out to my yeah. friend if you have an issue. That's why I do not like friends putting me down with somebody and them still being a part of the equation. Like, I don't like it anymore. I don't like it. I don't but like it. But you might like need it. that when it's time no, to get married. Like, like when it's time to be no, proposed to. No, I'm, that's fine. But what I'm saying I is if I meet saying. somebody through you and me and you are having an issue, do not go to my friend. It's mm. me and you in this relationship. Like, you can still be friends with my friend, whatever. If y'all were already friends, what I can't, I'm not stopping that. What I'm saying is, all of a sudden, they feel like my friend is their ally. No, like, no, it's these ally. are separate in its, in its yeah. here. Me and you, you and them as Get friends. It. You know what I mean? But you gotta look at it too. Some people, especially men, they sometimes need to be counseled. So they're like, okay, you know, I the got thing this is, I don't want my friend ca- counseling my nigga. Not, yeah, not even, no, not, it's not even, not. It's, it could even be a couple counseling your man on, like, come no, on, y'all like, need to figure that out. I don't need, but, I don't need nobody it, counseling my man. He needs to be, he needs to be, I, I, I don't even want it's him counseling, like, <laughs> he, he doesn't need to be counseling my friends. If anything, ca- counsel your friends. And I'm not true. saying I want him counseling his friends. He needs to figure it out, but don't counsel my friends for me and your relationship. You need to seek outside. Not even, and it shouldn't be friends, plural, but like some people, cause I'm not gonna, like, I mean, cause I know people that do this, it's like, they're in a relationship and they have another couple that they met each other through. So it's like if they ever have an issue, they feel comfortable coming to them and talking to them because it's like, you know, you're kind of like how, how we got here. And I feel mm-hmm. comfortable discussing some stuff with you. But I feel like it would but have to be a couple. not every time. Not every time. But, you know, sometimes if you need advice, it's okay. I mean, a couple maybe with wisdom like that. Like you you see like they. Have some time on them. Yeah, exactly. They've been together for a very long time. You know, you know that, you know, they've been through whatever they've been through. Okay, cool. But. For me to like come to the next person who's in the exact same situation as me, I'm like, mm, how much advice could you? No facts, because sometimes people try to come to me for advice, and yeah, I'm like, like, how much advice can you really give me? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know, because I, I, I have, I we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that, because I feel like I've gotten really good advice from different people, and it's like they don't have to no, necessarily. No, I agree. No, I get it, but it's like they don't. I don't want to ever be a thing where I count someone out just because they're not in a relationship or they're in a relationship just like me, and it's like they're not married, so their advice is not weighted in what I, I need you I know what I mean in that situation if me and my man are having issues right not to say that my friend doesn't have like a bigger intellect than me but it's like that's my friend you know what I mean so it's like you're mm-hmm. seeking her for advice when you me and you could just talk it out like you like <laughs> it should I, be easy I, like that huh 
Mm-hmm. I it's mean, true. yeah, but I don't feel like my friend can give you any other advice that just talking to me. I agree with you. Like, like, I agree with you. It I mean, because my be friend like is going to go off of what I've told her. So it's kind of just like, what is she going to say? I mean, yeah, unless that person's good at like being neutral and really if I want to go it. to my friend, that's one thing. But my man should not be going mm-hmm. to, a, to and, my friend for advice on me. Like, speak to me about it. So Sorry. I don't really have like a full blown petty chronicle, but I do want some advice, y'all. Okay. okay. Um, We're here. So we have had this podcast now for, you know, a couple years plus. Um, And have y'all been in a situation where a guy that you're like getting to know, talking to, dating, they reference a lot that you say on the podcast? Absolutely. And we're done. <laughs> no, actually, no. No. And it's actually been, it's, to the, it's like they're referencing things and I'm not actually not even catching the joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like he'll say something. I'll be like, what are you talking about? He'd be like, Oh, well you said it on the last episode. I'm like, or like, what? Re- I don't even, that's like, it wasn't that deep. So why? Yeah. Is why? Why up? is this even being brought up? And, Get him I, a ticket. He's a fan, <laughs> sir. No. <laughs> and I've actually like had to ask him like, Hey, I think at this point you shouldn't be watching my show anymore mm. because like, it'll be to the point where, I don't know, I think it was, like, some reel that we posted and I said something on it. And he was just like, oh, so this is how you feel? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, it is. It, like, we're talking about that in that moment. This doesn't necessarily apply to the relationship I have with you or the relationship I'm trying to grow with you. But I do feel like this can, like, the things that you're bringing up can necessarily, like, halt the relationship we're trying to grow. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know what to do. I mean, I think... There's not that much you can do. I mean, yeah, I feel like y'all should have watches. a separate communication just about the things you talk about on the podcast. Like, I'm not going to lie. This is what I tell everybody when I ask for the podcast. I tell them, when I, the stuff I say on there is complete cap. Like, I make up a whole personality Absolute and a character. Girl. It is not who I truly am. And they be like, really? You fake like that? I'm like, I'm hella fake. <laughs> Knowing that I be speaking my truth on here. But at the girl. same time, it's like, what you're never going to do is use what I say on this podcast yeah. against me. Yeah. I agree with Michelle. So I'm telling you that whatever you listen to, I forewarned you that, you know, it's not true. It's not real. Because I literally just, <laughs> I literally just shared our podcast with someone. I straight up told that person, hey, listen, you can listen, but li- don't, Whatever said on there, please don't take don't it. take it too serious. Mm-hmm. It's, I it is just we're just doing it's antics here, you know. We're we're <laughs> a podcast. Not lying. <laughs> no, it's not even a line. It's just like you gotta understand. Like I have a podcast, so mm-hmm. either you can understand that and respect that, and not always sitting here referencing stuff, or you can just be a fan and we don't have to talk to each other. Because one thing I can I because it does kind of annoy me when guys are always referencing the podcast. Because mm-hmm. I know I have a po- I know what I said. I was on there. I said mm-hmm. it. So it's like you don't have to sit here and everything. You're always tying it back to that podcast. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like either you're gonna understand mm-hmm. it and understand that you don't. This is my space. I don't want to be a thing where I'm with or he'll you like now. Send my a space video. Is in he'll here send now. a video and be like, Oh wow, no, this is how y'all really feel. I'm like, Oh my god. Oh my, if you don't oh, get off this, fan, like fan. if you don't get off this page, oh you a fan? One time, like I saw him open his phone, he was on our YouTube. <laughs> is he not supporting I'm his? So- he's no, not supporting see, his girl. That's okay, what, like, no, wait, okay, no, that's because okay. is he complaining or he's just having conversations? With no, you about he's it. not necessarily complaining, but it's like he'll just bring random things up, and I'll be like, mm-hmm. "What are you talking about?" And he'll well, be like, <laughs> he'll like low key like send a example and I'm like whoa oh, okay yeah <laughs> no. so he's definitely tuned in but I feel like that's better I feel like in my situation that I've had like men have straight out not a fan not listening to your podcast because yeah. I don't like the things you say on there yeah. but I'm not gonna lie this podcast page I got a couple men blocked y'all never come to my <laughs> podcast page I don't care if this is a group Instagram page y'all are blocked y'all never come across this page because I don't want to hear y'all's mouth and I have other people who they do t- tune in and I'm just like don't like yeah. that's all I say I've had people ask me for it no you're not yeah. getting it like yeah, like Google yeah, me. Like just, <laughs> you're I not li- getting it from me. I literally have one person I can accept that like you can ask me about the podcast and I will comfortably talk about anything. Uh, anyone outside, I'm just like, mm-hmm. look, y'all, we can't be doing. Mm-hmm. I can't do. I can't explain myself every time I say something. Like sometimes I'm just sat- talking. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's true, mm-hmm. but it's like I'm yeah. talking, and it may not even so, be like chronological talking. You know, like you it may, may be not- talking about something that happened like five years. years ago, but making it seem like it happened present. You gotta know wordplay. See, y'all taking things. He too might serious. just he might just really be supporting you. That's though. what I. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. It, it sounds giving support. It's giving. I'm trying to support you. I'm trying to show mm-hmm. you that I'm actively yeah, supporting so you. Like, I'm bringing up like, examples so you know that I'm st- no, listening. Just, I think just, it's cute. Just like and comment. Like great episode. So ladies. would y'all rather have someone Move. that like low key supported you like or didn't like okay supported you like that or didn't support you like enough? I feel oh, like I yeah like. 
me personally, I don't think I would mind somebody somebody doing that. Only because it sounds like he's purposely trying to alert me to the fact that he's listening. That's what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's just trying to let me know that I'm listening. Oh, especially you're bringing up examples. It's like, oh, wow, you really understand that I'm putting time into something. And if I'm put, like, if he was putting time into a lot of stuff, like, for instance, what if he was like really into like kickboxing? You would bring kickboxing into conversation, yeah. you know? So you have a podcast. So that's a great you know, conversation piece. So why wouldn't he bring that up? Especially when you record mm-hmm. so often. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I feel like we're just so used to people using it against us mm-hmm. that when somebody brings it up, we're automatically in defense mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's no, true. that makes sense. I appreciate it because boy. No, because like some people I like, been through it. <laughs> after Talk like about, what's happened. You sound so ridiculous on <laughs> yeah. there. Embarrassing me. Well, then don't listen. <laughs> don't listen. Like, don't listen. You're embarrassing me. Your friends ain't listening. And if they and are, they, they why don't you know I like you? Like, <laughs> Period. Period. <laughs> Gosh, I'm embarrassing you, but nobody knows. Like, girl. okay, <laughs> but we're gonna move on to the current events. So I'm much, rolling. maybe because we've been gone for a month, but I just feel like so much has happened. A lot, so even, today. Happened. even today, even today, even today. Okay, what happened? Tia, Tia and to- and Corey are divorced. Okay, are okay, getting they're divorced. getting divorced. But you they're know separated. what? Okay. I'm not too, like, super shocked about that. And I really do hate when people say that because it's like, so you a mind reader? No, but I did see a clip that surfaced where um, Corey was talking and he was talking about marriage. Mind you, talking about marriage. So you would think that if Tia has something she wants to add, that he would allow her the space to enter the conversation. So he paused. And so she was like, oh, yeah. And he was like, let me finish. Let me finish. But mm-hmm. the way he said it was so, like, curt and dismissive. Mm-hmm. And she stopped talking immediately. And I was like, you know what's crazy? I never pictured Tia to be somebody who just is submissive you know and i understand submission is like a good thing but when you're an actor and as big as tia is on camera i thought that she would have maybe have been a little bit more you know alpha i don't know so that that took me aback and made me like analyze the relationship a little bit differently and realize that Corey is a little bit i don't know he's kind of like detached whenever i see them together i just don't really see him like being affectionate Mm -hmm. or really just pouring into her like Mm -hmm. i see her pouring into him so Mm -hmm. but i also feel like it's hard you know being with a like you said a woman who is as successful as she is you know and unfortunately i can't say that he has that same success and don't um so you never so you never know (laughs) so you never know like what kind of backseat he has taken for these last 14 years being in this marriage so that might have caused him that detachment you know there's but, just a lot of there's a lot of struggles whenever like I said it comes to ego it comes yeah, to pride and different true. things like that there's a lot it of men who cannot take that back seat to their wife it definitely it, I mean it definitely comes well uh, we're just alluding at this point yeah, but yeah come like she def- detach all that I like, mean <laughs> the ego thing though because she definitely <laughs> said that like when they first started dating like he was riding the bus like you know what I mean like when she first got with him he was very much struggling so it's like I don't even with him not being as big of a star as she is even at the at the age that they are now like she knew that from the beginning and she was riding with him for then so it's like I would hate to think that his ego is bruised after someone and that's the thing about men like y'all be worried about these superficial things that like, i don't make enough money as long as you a hustler the that's money really saying. don't matter to me. me you know what i mean so i, I, I we're, you, we're speculating but, but to the to, outside i don't care about the outside that's a, I, no you don't care about the outside yeah, but, but the men does yeah, yeah like so. the thing is like even look at like when you go and read comments mm-hmm. like on youtube and like the instagram comments mm-hmm. you know you don't believe that about yourself but the fact that someone else might believe right. that about you sometimes it can get to you so you never know what people have been saying to him but he's acting right now he's in um yeah I finna say. the spinoff off of uh what's the show with uh spencer james uh okay. the, the football yes. show anyways he's on the spinoff all version. American. All American. All American. he's on oh, the spinoff version yeah. of that's the, what I'm the saying. one in atlanta and i he, he, he has a pretty big role, so you know what they say: stay down till you come up. And I feel like he stayed down till he came up. It, that role ain't that big. That's not that role ain't that. I, big. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, it ain't that big. It, it, it ain't that sister sister big. <laughs> like it's just. I mean, Corey will never be. It, we that, can't say that. We're talking about Tia Mowry for one. Okay, mm-hmm. so she has. Yeah. She's an icon at she this is, point. Yeah. She is. So him trying to compete with that at his big age is already like... <laughs> it's like, yeah. you, you, you know, lost 20 so, years ago. So I'm going to give him his flowers for mm-hmm. being on a current show now because for a long time, every time I saw him, I thought he was Devon from That's a Raven. <laughs> Stop. He was always doing... Like, is he not? Right. Is no, that no, not... That wasn't him. Okay. He was okay, always good. doing like, independent films. There is... He has a doppelganger. You know, he's on... Devon's on the new Raven show. Like, that's yeah. not oh, Corey. Really? No, that's what I'm saying. He has yeah. a doppelganger, but Corey was on Sister, Sister. Was he not? Or is no, that he Devon? Was on 17 again. No, oh. si- no. Sister, Sister. Who, who's her boyfriend at one time? She's, it, it wasn't him, though. It was he, Devon? 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm so invested. confused. Um, but yeah, honestly, like when I read that today, I was like, dang, because I actually like them together. I've never looked mm-hmm. at them and been like, oh, he's detached. I, mm-hmm. I, I like black love. I'm just like, I love that she's like, you oh. know. My thing in is, a black relationship, has black children. I just love black love. But I hope she's what? Because her sister's married to a white man? I did not bring up Tamara in this. She Yikes. has nothing to do with this conversation. <laughs> but I do, I do hope sister. she can love again. Like, you know what I mean? Because I feel like yeah. sometimes with people who, like, they're with somebody for such a long amount of time, like, and they get divorced, like, they don't move on. So, like, my hope for her is, like, she finds love again. You know what I mean? Because her DMs are out. booming. I feel like, but she, I feel like she's Tamara gonna move wants to be out here. She's a mama, too. She's not about to be out here fighting and bopping like we want her to do. Like, she's gonna be winding down by somebody in particular. I feel like to, I think Tia's dating. Okay, uh, it wouldn't surprise she look like a girl that's dating, I and mean, that's why they have she to was in the game, put so. this out. Um, oh gosh, I have a question: school. Team Cardi or Team JT? I'm Team. These girls got to chill. JT, I'm Team. Somebody said chill. Uh, we need that empowerment brunch asap. So the thing is, I don't... so who do you? Okay, look, do y'all feel like Cardi threw the shade, and then JT reacted? L- let me see. Okay, so. Cardi threw the shade first, but I feel like Cardi threw shade because she felt like JT she was, she, was she was mad that JT was going back and forth with her fans on yeah. Twitter. Which to me, I'm like, I don't. I think she's Cardi fans are crazy. They go after everybody, so maybe she felt like since you're engaging with my fans, like you're attacking my fan base, you, it's an attack on me. But I don't know, Cardi. This whole being vocal on Twitter thing, I'm just not understanding. So who are you going for next? Who are you going for next? Is it going to be Katie Got Bands? Is it going to be B.I.? Like, you can't go after everybody on Queen Mix. And the stuff that Cardi was saying compared to what JT was saying, I don't, how say people could be Team Cardi? All JT was saying was, JT, every one of JT's tweets was her being defensive, defending herself against the stuff mm-hmm. that Cardi was saying. Mm-hmm. Cardi was talking about how, oh, y'all ain't had a hit since Act Up. Mm-hmm. Y'all's, uh, y'all Rider. ain't making P no money. Yeah, she said you're a go- you have a ghost Oh, yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. like, D- don't forget P, like, and a, uh, a fan page had tweeted like a video of P telling and she, Cardi. She misinterpreted that video, though. Definitely. Like, did. That had nothing to do with but what she tweeted. She, mm-hmm. she was even retweeting stuff. So to me, Everyone's like, oh, my gosh, y'all get mad at Cardi, but y'all already know Cardi's going to go in. But the depth that she went in was it so was unnecessary that you cannot tell Below me. Can yeah, I you tell cannot you tell me that that was a reaction but to can I, But somebody I, made a point and was just like, JC should have hung it up when she realized like all of Cardi's tweets were perfectly punctuation and everything. They think not, somebody else was tweeting on Cardi's not, behalf. That, this is my thing, okay? Oh. And yeah. I, be, I'm, not, I'm not trying to take away from Cardi's success, but it's, to mm-hmm. me, it's like, girl, like you were literally like saying things where it's like, you're talking to someone that really puts they, their pen Thank and they crap. Right, right. mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, you really... Like you're JT ta- rap. But you know what I'm saying? But you talking to JT as if, like, girl, you over here writing a song right now. That's why I felt JT when she said, fetch you a, a, a fetch talent. Because it's mm-hmm. like, w- was she lying when she said that? No. Okay, and for those of y'all who don't know what's going on, I'm going to try to know, summarize right? it in yeah. 30 yeah. seconds. We, we hop right on in. I'm trying to summarize this <laughs> in 30 seconds. So um, JT came on, was pretty much congratulating all this other stuff. Congratulating Glow. You know, Glow did the FNF remix that Cardi was on. So a lot of Cardi no, fan base. Tomorrow. Bless. Oh, oh, sorry. Tomorrow too. Tomorrow too. So a lot of people were pretty much saying like, or the Cardi fans came through and said, okay, <laughs> why you don't mention Cardi? Cardi was on there too. And JT said, I've always supported Cardi, but this is about Glow right mm-hmm. now. And they're like, well, you don't want, ever since you did a song with Nicki, all of a sudden you can't, you, uh, you're scared to mention Cardi, this is that and the other, da, da, da. Between the midst of this back and forth, Cardi t- tweets lap, lap dog, dog, which is pretty much what the Cardi fans was insinuating that she's a lap dog. And Nikki. so JT tweets winger dog. And then Cardi is like, we go, we talking back and forth in the DMs. Why are you bringing it to, to the internet? Which is what makes me, everyone's always like, everyone keeps saying, oh, well, lap dog was not intended towards JT. I feel like since JT and Cardi were already talking in DMs, JT understood that D- uh, Cardi must have had some kind of animosity towards her because Cardi had just mm-hmm. slid into Akbar's DMs on some, do you have a problem? Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that was the same energy she slid into JT's DMs with. Right. So if you're going back and forth with somebody in the DMs and it's kind of like we're trying to figure out if and at that you same feel time, like I have an issue with you because of the Nicki song, you tweet some lap dog shit, I'm going to assume that lap dog is for me. And it, I don't know. It's just like giving like Cardi like once again like, you don't understand your your role in this game. Mm-hmm. And like and it clearly shows. Like and it's to me like I get it. People are like people are always coming after Cardi. Nobody's coming yeah. after you. Like at this point it really sounds like you sipping on Haterade right now. Like it's okay. Like 
I feel like all these female mm-hmm. rappers, y'all all can eat in this industry. Yeah. It is not. At the end of the day, y'all will give Nicki Minaj her respect though, because she yeah. can it's rap. So crazy. And that's so like, we are. We it, I don't understand why it's so hard for her to yeah. give her that. Like, are you mad because she brought all these artists but together and they honest, all just wrecked? I shop, really and you think, can't do that. I really think Cardi thinks that she is on the same like she's not and like, it's as weird. far as like talent goes i think and rap goes i think mean, she's on the she thinks she's on the same place is as gen nikki. z putting her on the same level mm-hmm. as nikki she is nowhere near nikki's success like girl oh. i'm telling you but, but we but are t- still waiting on your sophomore album but it's been look, how many years if look bar for oh, wow. bar of course they cannot you compete. feature artists now bar for bar they cannot compete ever <laughs> success wise cardi is up there yeah. I mean, Cardi, we're not. We're, I, did, I just told you I'm not successful. taking away from her mm-hmm. success. I just will not ever like. But bar for bar, and, like and music wise, they can't compete. Rapper I mean, talk, no. Cardi, I mean, Nicki Minaj has been in the game for mm-hmm. over 15 years, yeah. and her discography is like, I mean, it's Out uncomparable. But Cardi, she has made a, mm-hmm. a name for herself in a very short amount of time. So, I just feel like they need to cut. Cardi's phone privileges her, and access yes. to social media, and Nicki's mm-hmm. as well because yeah, they yeah, both yeah, be getting hard to defend. Yeah. And I love them and both. That's but a problem. That's what I want to touch on, though. I feel like in the midst of all that arguments, though, Nicki Minaj changed her profile picture to JT, and then and Cardi, Cardi B changed it to Remy Ma, and changed hers and like, to Remy Ma. And, and I'm just like, like and then Nicki, people, and then Nicki changed hers to a pin. Mm-hmm. It, it was her sign from her studio that said and Nicki, like, and she was holding the pin right at the eye. And it's Hashtag like Cardi, That's how we know you don't know rap. Nicki bodied Remy. Why would you change it to that? That's not. It didn't mm-hmm. do what it's supposed to do. Body, <laughs> bo- oh, oh, body is a stretch. But be- wait, before you say that. Okay, Nikki, Cardi, we get it in the JD thing. That's not what disappointed me. What I'm disappointed not gonna you? What disappointed you? It was Carisha uh, yeah. and Santana. Oh, because oh, don't get me started on Carisha. I, I didn't see Santana. I wanted to, them to send out an Amber alert. I thought something was. I'm like, is Carisha okay at this point? Like, she didn't stick up for JT at all. She was she never absent. does. She was never going at to stick all. up for JT. I'm like, talking Car- about I just woke up. LOL. LOL. Like, and this is what okay annoys me about the situation because I feel like. As her bandmate, like, that's the most you can say. And I feel like when uh, she did that little interview or whatever, when they were saying, like, JT said that she would be so upset if, like, uh, Young Miami did her own thing. JT, the way she did not stick up for you, Go do solo. your own thing. Go do solo. solo because you, you are JT the one the who is number girls. one with the skills of rapping. Go. But Please. you know what? I think I think Young Miami is very much so like a Switzerland. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mm. feel like she's no, definitely she's trying. I, th- I feel like she's definitely trying to, like, expand her like craft mm-hmm. and things like that and so she's trying I, to jump shit so everything she, but rap so yeah but she, I don't think that she's really trying to like make those type of like enemies you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying at the same whereas, time you still rap for like, your band like whereas JT said like I, I really do feel like JT still like goes by this I'm from the street code Miami mm-hmm. I think is definitely like into the life that she lives right now but, but I also but feel every- like because my young Miami's just not that rapper girl. She don't give a fuck about the argument. Yeah. JT has a playing field when it comes That's, to the argument yeah. that was being had. So like Cardi B's actually like, coming for what, like what she actually prays mm-hmm. for is her rap, her penmanship. So it's like at the end of the day, I just I'm not gonna. I expected more from Miami. Mm-hmm. Maybe not Santana. I'm, I'm not, I didn't hear what he had to do, what he had to say. Mm-hmm. But I just think young Miami for that to be your like your like Joy said her bandmate. Mm-hmm. You really mm-hmm. should have said more. And the fact that you didn't, you better go on your fucking Carisha t- mm-hmm. Please platform and you better address that on air. And if you don't, it says a lot I about like, you because it's weird. I feel like she's trying to get Cardi on Carisha, please. Why? Yeah, exactly. I agree. And, that, exactly and, to me, I and if you do that, if she, honestly, y'all, if she, do, I'm done with it. Exactly and I feel like she'll talk about it. Exactly. I honestly feel like it's, maybe mm-hmm. this was all publicity. Exactly. Who knows? Honestly, I'm tired of talking about this because yeah, watch. low key. I do watch. want, I have one quick question then we can go to the next topic, okay? So, do you think, because I know we talked about how, like, we got to take the the keyboard away from Nikki, too. Yeah. Do you think that Nikki is going to issue a public apology to PMB's no. girlfriend she's now not, that the new no. details have been no, brought out? Not, 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 not publicly. Yeah, probably no. privately, but not, not publicly. publicly. Not publicly. She'll, She'll probably send she, something privately. If she does, it'll definitely be private, and I don't even know. But at And if this it's point, private, I feel her, because we don't need to know nothing. Cause as, okay, right. so but just, call just that, a touch base on it okay. real quick. So basically, the new details that have come out is that um, there was someone who spotted P and B and his uh, P and B and his girlfriend going into Roscoe's, and then they went and got this um, father, and the father came back. Father went and got his seventeen-year-old son, and ultimately, the seventeen-year-old son is who ended up robbing um, P and B and his girlfriend. Um, and I know a lot of people at the time they had blamed uh, Stephanie, which is his girlfriend, his and the mother of his child, mm-hmm. because she had posted a location. So. Nikki, including a lot of other rappers, were going in on her saying, like, 
as a, a celebrity, you should know better than to post your location in real time, basically mm-hmm. almost blaming her for PNB being robbed and killed. And now it's clearly showing that that wasn't the case. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, but I feel sad. like I understand why Kodak, Kodak would apologize because Kodak came out and did a public apology because he told her the girl to kill herself. Yeah. So I feel like that definitely deserves a public apology. But Nick, I mean, Nikki was really smart about not mentioning her and just kind of alluding to the yeah. fact that she might have been in danger. She was kind of talking not, in code. Celebrity yeah. should know not to do it. But yeah. she, she still touched on it, but it wasn't just her. It was a it was. That's a not saying she wasn't the people. only one that said something. But yeah. I think Which because is, out of the people who did voice that, like it was Nikki and Kodak Black, that people really were putting, have the, biggest putting, name. The, putting the focus on it. And it, it's really messed up. Like, people, you really have to be quiet before you address things. Mm-hmm. You should just, just be quiet. You don't need to address yeah. it. Like I do I cause I'm a Nikki fan, but I don't I don't agree with what she said. I think she should have just stayed mm-hmm. quiet. Like sometimes, girl, you are not normal. You are still a celebrity. You cannot yeah. say certain things. So okay. <laughs> Speaking of celebrities saying certain things, did y'all see that thing about the low vibrational flakes? What? <laughs> <laughs> so um. there was a... I don't know if y'all know about <laughs> Coach Stormy. Coach Stormy and her friend Tammy Price. They was out like at a barbecue. No, not a barbecue. First of all, Coach Stormy threw a whole celebratory weekend in Miami that cost 10k. Really? And that was, oh, and that that was, was? one of the days of oh, the of Stormy. Thing. She's the one who used to sell like Nutribur. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I thought. But <laughs> yeah, she. I don't want to say anything. Who are these people? Maybe untrue. But um, she is like a coach. Just long story short, and she makes money off of selling sessions and finessing women. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. The leader of the women empowerment groups. <laughs> but um, yeah, so she hosted, I guess, the weekend or whatever. And one of those weekends, there was like a barbecue slash cookout, whatever. They had cookout food. And so Stormy has like two chicken wings on her plate. And her friend, her the, the plate looked good. I mean, I didn't see no like it was, sides. No sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, <laughs> and so t- Stormy was pretty much picking on her food saying, that plate is low vibrational. Like, why would you have somebody make you a plate with so much food on it it just reflects poorly on you and who said this coach, uh, stormy. coach stormy and she was to her friend tammy to her friend tammy and mm-hmm. i guess the, the lesson of it which i mean I guess is the tammy lesson, fit yeah fit enough was it even about like the amount of yeah, food what she is was it eating? no it, it was pretty yeah. yeah i want her to land in what she was no so, so was pretty much it was it's pretty much saying that you can't eat the every plate somebody makes for you you know you i'm not i'm not gonna eat i don't know what was the point the message was like i'm yeah. not gonna eat the plate that somebody makes for me like you have to make your own plate it was, and you have to tell people the type of plate that you'll suit for because I w- if someone made a plate like that for me I would turn it down if someone looked at both of our plates who would they think is royalty between me and you they it was pop- more so like the presentation of the oh, plate like okay. it didn't even because, really matter because was it the quality of the food she was I mean no it was a lot of food she they, was like how are you gonna eat all that and I'm yeah, like, like the girl the looked plate? like she would've ate it so how was that a low vibrational plate it. if people you're not talking anything. about the quality of food People say anything. So she kind of yeah. went into like it didn't, go, it didn't correlate. Okay. I mean, she, apparently that that entire weekend was like I think day one was like shop my closet estimated at two k for people to go and shop like her closet and to see the type of clothes that she wears. Mind if she doesn't she dresses not nice enough to be shopping her closet. Day two was like women's empowerment. Day three was like the boat thing where they mm-hmm. were on the boat with the food and stuff like that. It really okay. it really doesn't make sense. Like I'm so confused. And it's like the way she was and it's like. You can really make a cult because the way she was talking to this girl, this girl was like, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like literally agreeing with her. And I'm just she like, was. you don't have to agree with everything your friend is telling you. And whatever yeah. this nonsense she was speaking into you in that moment, touch it all on her using, food. And she was even saying like, are, mm-hmm. I didn't, uh, I didn't tell them to make that. I mean, just because they make my plate don't mean I have to eat it. It don't mean I have to eat it. And it was like this, y'all, this, just eat your, you're at a cookout. But I'm like, not going to lie. I just don't under, I'm caught up on the low vibration. I think people are using wrong word choice because I, I don't understand how it's low vibration and it's like, what's that's what I'm saying. Are you talking about the quality of food or what the plate looks like? That, that's not. It's like Atlanta slang. Low vibrational is just like, you know, like it's not a the quality. presentation of the plate. Because yeah. she had a lot of stuff on her plate. It doesn't matter, but it was just the way she was comparing her one plate to the next plate. Her plate barely had any food on it. Her plate had a lot of food on it. It didn't even really matter. But I'm like, you're Sounds telling like somebody does. you're saying it's, it's low vibrational, but you're sitting there with your legs wide open while you're Smacking. telling somebody you don't lick your fingers and you keep pointing at this girl's plate. Like everything about that was <laughs> unsanitary. Like yeah. what are you doing? Like no, nothing no. about it makes uh, sense. Man, I was mm-hmm. off her when I saw a video of they did um card roulette. 
which and this is why I don't like, right? I hate when people, somebody offers something, like offers a suggestion or a game, and maybe the first one's out. I don't like that because it's like, no, bitch, you proposed this game. You're supposed to lose. So pretty much it's like they went out to some fine dining restaurant or whatever, and it's card roulette. So they hand the oh yeah, they hand the waiter all their cards, and he's like picking out the cards, and like the person is filming, and I think, and I'm telling you, I think it's the same girl with the low vibrational plate, <laughs> and she's filming, and towards the end you see the. The main coach, she gets her card back. And I was like, of course she would get her card back. And you probably the one who suggested the game. And now somebody got to pay $1,000 just for sitting at this table. And so she put the video up. The video didn't finish. And somebody was like, "Um, why didn't you record the whole thing? And she was like, because at that time my card hadn't been pulled yet. (laughs) And I started to get nervous. And I'm like, see, if you're getting nervous, that already tells you that you do not want to pay for everybody's meal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And... I feel like that's really shitty for somebody to offer someone else to pay. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. If you sign up for a game like that, your heart's pitter pattering and you're looking up to somebody just hoping like at the end, like, <laughs> ma'am, you got the money. Like, please just don't Cause leave that, out to dry like this. Because that's a whole entire dinner. I've definitely played a game before. Like, we were at a bar and it was like, yeah. everyone put your phone on the table. The first person to pick up the phone, you have to cover the first round of drinks that were bought. Like, something simple. But it's like, to just suggest a game like that when you had a table full of 10 people and say, hey, you need to pay for everybody. Like, I just remember that from Anna or whatever her name. What was the girl? Um, oh, um, on uh, Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. they, they played that game. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I feel but like they were rich. One, it's one, that's what I'm saying. It's one thing if every... Because I'm thinking, okay, everyone's down. When she said she cut the video off because her card ain't been pulled yet, I said, no, not you was shaking in your boots. See, I can't play no <laughs> game where I'm not... I can't win comfortably. <laughs> no. So, um, okay. What did Joe Budden do, y'all? <sighs> he, Joe Budden wants to be canceled by force. I don't know and what it okay, is. I love Joe Budden. Like, I do he too. is... But like, he's this so is like serious. admirable whenever it comes to the podcast game and like the things yeah. that he's done for it. So it's like he's, an, abu- he's an abuser though. Yeah, he's yeah. It's um, come out time and time again. And it was on but what, what what did he do this time? So he admitted to um in the, and the thing is guys do that and we know that guys do this. But yeah. I, let me be the first to tell y'all that's rape. So stop yeah. doing shit like that. But he admitted to pretending to put a condom on when he's having a sex with a girl. Mm. That's called stealthy. It is. That's not you're having you're having sex with somebody unprotected without their consent that's not okay mm-hmm. and the fact that you can laugh why it did off, he see, do that I why do you even talk about it why, exactly I honestly y'all it, unprovoked I people be say, telling on themselves because i can't really speak too much on it let's the episode for context because honestly they may have been talking about something and that's why it I, I mean let him to say that i don't think he should have said it on air but i don't care i don't it's not even about i don't think he should have said it on air i don't think he should have done it and yeah, that yeah, and absolutely. that's the thing i feel like it's just absolutely. disgusting and no shade joe budding like he proves himself time and time again to be problematic but it's not even that he's on a major network so the fact that you have editors mm-hmm. that continue to let things like this hit the air it's very dangerous to your listeners and for you have a, a huge male audience and in mm-hmm. fact the stealth thing right now we're in an era where it's consent crazy, is yeah. such a huge thing and people are yeah. just now understanding exactly the difference between coercion and consent and all these other things you have yet to come out and issue an apology or even an explanation well they took the episode down as they should have but with no apology, nothing. Just took it down as if it never appeared. But y'all know how we are. It's 2022. People are screen recording and, and documenting these things before you take them down. Mm-hmm. And he did comment on it, but it wasn't on some accountability stuff. It was really mm-hmm. just on some like, everybody mm-hmm. let's make me the bad guy. I don't really care. So do you really feel... Bad. Okay, so how would y'all feel if his network dropped him? They're not going to. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't care. Like I don't, I'm not going to lie. Rogan I don't listen. Because if Joe Rogan didn't not get dropped. That's, like, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. I was just, I literally like was going to say, he's Joe, a Joe Rogan. If, not, he's not going If in Joe there. Rogan doesn't get dropped, they he's really can't drop dropped. Joe Budden. I don't listen to him. They so can drop Joe dropped, Budden, but I Joe care. Rogan will never get dropped. Yeah. It's already made. Wow. We Everyone knows that. I mean, I, I would love if he just addressed it like in an educational format. Yeah. Maybe use this as a teaching moment for other people to come through. And it's not because he's a rapist and was saying something like that. So what is he going to educate somebody on when he's done that act? I mean, I mean, but, but maybe, he maybe like know. learning from it because he could have he could have honestly not known. Like like you said, this is a new era where we are talking. We're bringing up. We're putting new definitions and like to new words. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So there's a lot of things in the it, 20, 30 years ago, especially the type of game that he grew up in you know what i'm saying he grew up in the spotlight there were a lot of things that happened um in the in the type of industry he was in that Mm -hmm. just flew even if there's a new definition to it quote unquote being called stealthing lying to someone saying that you're using protection and you're not is still 
immoral. Yeah. Like at, the end, of, at, the, end of, the, at yeah. the end of the day, like just because now there's a word for it and people are c- calling people out for doing it, the fact that mm-hmm. you still chose to have sex with a woman under the impression that she thought you had protection on, like that's morally wrong. So mm-hmm. it was like I don't, I don't care the times then, now, whatever. It was wrong, Period. and the fact that you sat in there, you're laughing about it. That's not yeah, cool. That's not like okay. it's not yeah. cool at all. I actually haven't. I haven't, I haven't it Heard definitely it. gives me those vibes of people who be like, oh, my grandma was racist, but that's back when it was okay. Bitch, it was never, never okay. okay. Yeah, it just didn't right. affect you. What are you talking yeah. about? Child, but yeah. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into the topic, which I feel like is going to be a little controversial today because I know we all have different opinions. You think so? Yes, I definitely think we do. So <laughs> there was a tweet that has been surfacing around Twitter. and It's kind of blew up a little bit. And she said... My unpopular opinion is that ghosting is very clear communication. And in that, I want to know how everyone feels about what she said. Mm, I mean, I agree. (laughs) <laughs> long story short but mm-hmm. i think it, it does depend on the level of relationship like okay. if i've only known you for a couple of days and you text me and i ain't text back and you're texting me hey, you're talking to yourself i i mm-hmm. there, i for me to come back and, and start respond to you and tell you to stop texting me i feel like on my part would be a little aggressive like, <laughs> i feel like at this point the ghosting is the communication that you need mm-hmm. to stop texting why would you want to text somebody and not get a reply mm-hmm. mickey what's your thoughts on that um Anyone that ghosts anybody is actually very childish. Okay, and that's not okay. That's not the question though. Do you, do you do you feel like that's clear communication? That's not that's not communication at all. Okay, like okay. there's literally no words. There's no there's no sound. You you did not communicate. You did not communicate. Okay, Paulette, what do you think? I agree with Nikki. It's just the vibe you're giving off that you're not interested. But it's not you clearly telling mm-hmm. someone you're not interested. Yeah, it's like so. Uh, while I don't necessarily, I'm not saying like ghosting is right or wrong, but I do feel like if someone ghosts you, and again, there's different circumstances to ghosting, whether you agree with it or not, when someone ghosts you, that's kind of clear communication in a sense. Like, I don't need someone to explain to me, like, damn, this person ghosted me. Like, I can kind of put two and two together. I'm not saying it's right, but to an extent, when someone chooses that action, that's kind of mm-hmm. clear communication on where they would like to go with you. Like, it kind of sets the tone of what they're trying to do. Not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong, but when you put it like that, it kind of makes you think like, okay, like, uh, damn, like, it is clear. How do I know the difference between you ghosting me and you being in danger? For all I know, you could be laying in a ditch and just not being able to get back to your phone. Let but my how, do I, how do I know you've actually ghosted me? <laughs> See, this is the thing. If you don't know then it's not your business to be concerned. That's what? No, I'm going to be complete. I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> you can reserve those feelings of concern for my close family and friends. <laughs> if you don't hear from me. If I talk to you, if I've been talking to you, it's not that I've been talking to you every day, every day for, for how the long? last month. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. It depends on the level of the yeah, relationship. Like if I've been talking to you every day for the last month and then now I haven't heard from you in over 24 hours. Yeah, actually, I am going to think something's wrong. And I'm not going to think you ghosted me. Well, see, that's... Di- so at one point, different. after you reach out and you hear nothing, like... I and, you don't, to... and you don't know family or friends to reach exactly, out on. Yeah. So after you called or text a couple of times, like, what, what, how do you handle that situation? You know what the crazy part is? This actually happened to me. Um, this happened to me, and I reached... I miraculously like had had a cousin's number. And so I reached out to the cousin just to make sure. Cause I was like, dang, like this literally like this person disappeared. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the cousin was like, Oh, well he's coming to my house today. I'm going to talk to him. I bet you, I, I bet you got the and message. And then next thing I knew, like I hadn't heard back from the cousin or him. So I was just like, okay, now I get it. Yeah. But <laughs> so honestly, like, I probably so, still would have been calling because so thinking like he was in trouble. So Nikki, the cousin goes to you too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you still got the message. I okay. got the message because mm-hmm. afterwards, but literally it had been like yeah. two days before I reached out to the cousin. Like literally I was like over here worried. And that's the reason why I don't fuck with people who ghost people because what you're not going to do is have my blood pressure high, have my Whoa. mind wandering and me <laughs> worried about if you're dead or your not. Blood pressure should be high now. I mean, but, I'm not going to lie. But after after a is, month. After t- mm-hmm. my thing it is was like, more than a month though. Oh okay. oh, okay. But my thing is like after two days, like, I feel like to say somebody ghosts you after two days is a little extreme. Even Are you if you two days or two dates, two no, days, two days, two days. I feel like that's, that's I feel like that's, that's just a little like extreme to me because like you, anything yeah. can be happening. And while we always say communication is just this, that, and that, whatever. It's but I feel golden. like if a couple of weeks go by, mm-hmm. then if I want to, I'm going to reach out. But if a day or two doesn't go by, I'm not going to fret because 
I can go mm-hmm. a day or two without texting somebody yeah. back, yeah. even if I've been in constant communication with them every yeah, that day. Part. So to me, that's not. And this I don't is know. So all I'm saying is, you better make sure you stand like ten. I want you to stand twenty toes down on that because on ghosting. On being on ghosted? ghosting. Okay. Because here's the thing: if you ghost me, <laughs> you know, like the motto is like. He was acting rude. That's gonna be me. Oh wait, like, see, uh, if I am, oh, no. I'm, I, gonna, I'm like, coming I, I'm on. I'm not bothered. Wait, I'm not Nikki, bothered. You can't so be bothered. You, can't you be didn't bothered. understand when he didn't like being cut off. She didn't get ghost. He didn't ghost her though. She she communicated. She communicated. She communicated. She but it was still a, a cut off. No, there's a difference. No, you're, you, you're ghosting. You you're com- not communicating. Exactly. If you communicate with me, you no longer want to like t- talk to me, date me, mm. whatever. Cool. Yeah. But if you ghost me, that's a whole different situation. And if you and see honestly, me outside, literally, literally, I, like, and I honestly, I'm I, Casper. I have Th- to agree so. with Nikki because I have ghosted someone, and literally, like, I do not, I will not look your direction. I don't, because mm. I know I have to respect myself and so, you. Like, why would I reach out to you? I ghosted you. We're so I guess friends. for clarification, because I think everyone has a different opinion. Because just off of what we just said, because Nikki said two days, I said a couple weeks. Like somebody said a month. So it's like. What exactly does ghosting look like to each individual, you know, per se? Mm -hmm. And do y'all ever feel like ghosting somebody is acceptable? Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so I'll answer. Ghosting to me is like y'all were having a conversation and it's been like kind of consistent. And then out of nowhere, I don't hear from you anymore. Like, and maybe like, like Nikki, I don't want to, I'm not trying to like play or anything, but (laughs) your situation when a month passed. It's yeah. like, a month, mm-hmm. whole that's month. ghosting. You know, and I'm going to understand mm-hmm. that because honestly, I'm not going to lie. If a month I haven't heard from you, that means we don't know how to fuck with each other. And that's cool. And do I think it's cool? No, mm-hmm. I personally don't. Just because it's like, that's what's wrong with this world right now. We do not know how to communicate well. You said it's not cool, but do you think not. do you think it could ever be acceptable? Never. No? It's okay. not acceptable because the thing about it, like, you over here dating someone consistently, y'all going out, y'all doing this out of nowhere, you just stop hearing from him. How mm. are you going to feel? That's unex- And then he yeah. tries to come back after that. You're not so, going to accept it. So My point mm-hmm. of view, when I think about ghosting, like, whenever I've done it, because I have, I'm not going to sit here and cap, is like I've gone out on a couple dates with somebody. We've been light texting, not even every day, just we trying to get to know each other. And in a couple dates and then getting to know each other, like I'm just not feeling it. And I just decide to stop texting back. That That's what I consider ghosting. And the reason why I take that action, because I know you're going to be like, why do not you just communicate? Because men are crazy. The minute you tell a man to me, anytime I, I have done the times I've done them, I'm like, okay, like I'm not really interested. They want to clap back and talk to you, but I wasn't even trying to mm-hmm. fuck with Like, yes, you were. You absolutely were. So <laughs> to just avoid having that argument with somebody, especially when it's not, it, I mean, I'm speaking from an instance where mm-hmm. it wasn't intense. Like, we only went out maybe once or twice, light that's texting, different. light c- communication. That is what I consider ghosting to me. That's what I've done. And I will say in regards to do I think ghosting is ever acceptable? I think it is. And I'll explain in this existence because I feel like it's um, when ghosting somebody is almost like to me, like when you set a boundary. Like if I communicated to you, like I don't like A, B, C, D, and you cross that and I explain it to you and you do it again, I'm not addressing it with you again. Mm-hmm. And if I choose not to talk to you no more, that is also considered a form of ghosting because I'm not going to continue telling somebody you crossed the boundary with me. And if I choose to just ignore you from that point forward, that to some people will take that as ghosting. And so when I look at ghosting in that instance, I feel like ghosting people in some certain senses it is acceptable. And that's where I'm speaking from when I feel like that. No, I agree because I'm not going to lie. I I ghost people too, but I I don't ghost them in the sense of we've been well we've been dating for months and we got into an argument and you're never speaking to me again. No, mm-hmm. I'm ghosting people who I just feel like you're. I don't feel like you're entitled to an explanation as to why I'm not talking to you anymore because we didn't go that deep. There are some relationships where I feel like if you reach out to them and say hey, I don't feel like this is working. They'll be looking at you like mm-hmm. was it that serious and mm-hmm. like. Jory said they'll try to play you and be like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I wasn't even trying to date you like that anyway. I thought I thought we were just being friends. I thought we were just hanging. I thought we were just kicking it. In that sense, it's not a thing where he's blowing you up and like, oh, how are you? It's really a thing where y'all probably text every so often, every few days. He actually feels like to go on a date. And then naturally, it's like, you know what? I'm not going to text you. You'll probably text me once and I won't respond. And from there, we just move on. Or maybe somebody who only calls you every so often and they're so inconsistent where it's like, you know what? The next time you call me, I'm not picking up. Yeah. I can understand that. You know, and it's like, I'm Mm -hmm. not, you'll know why I'm not picking up because you'll understand that you haven't been consistent enough to expect me Mm -hmm. to answer or respond every Mm -hmm. time you hit my line. So to me, that's where I feel like ghosting is acceptable. Of Mm -hmm. course, if you have that type of relationship where if they ask you what's going on, you know that you owe them an explanation as to why you're no longer speaking to them. But there are some people who is not worthy of the explanation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Yeah, for me, I I can agree with Michelle. Like, 
I do think that there are certain situations where ghosting is just like necessary. You know, like mm-hmm. some people just don't understand. Like you can mm-hmm. you can drill it into someone's head multiple times and tell them exactly what you're how you're feeling, how you're thinking, and they just still don't understand it. And so at that point, you're like fed up. You're just like fuck it. Like I'm not. I'm just not talking to them no more. And I have been in situations like that, but like the situation I just talked about. No, ghosting was really <laughs> not okay. Like that yeah, actually, yeah. like yeah, that was actually that put fire in my eyes. Did he ever explain really? himself? Yeah. No. To this, oh, oh, you really? haven't talked to him since. To this day, I have not talked to this man. Have you seen? He, him? He found, have you seen him? He, somebody told him something, mm-hmm. or he may just no. So really, what it was, was, I don't know. So really, what it was is like he was trying to like get into a relationship. I wasn't ready for a relationship. So I was like, you know, like we're still getting to know each other, that type of thing. It only been like oh, two, got two it. and a half months at this point. That's a long time. Yeah. To go somebody, that is a long time. That two is a ghost. Months. That's a long time. Yeah. So like it had been like two and a half. Like he flew down here. Like there was oh, a lot ego of, was hurt. there was a lot of different things that like went into this, you know? So it was like very oh, surprising Lord. to me. And so literally from, I haven't talked to him since May. Honestly, I actually uh, don't even know if he's alive. I know he's alive because he read some of my messages. Yikes. Like, so I see, oh, red? so I see that they're red. But after that, so, I was just like, "You okay. better than me." I'm not. Uh-uh. So overall, like, how do you feel about that situation? Me overall, honestly, Girl, it, made me, it made you me. It made me see her emotions. No, I'm like, saying, but like, I, does that change like how she moves forward? Like, do you now feel like because of what you felt in that moment? Like, do you feel like going forward? Like. Because you said you've ghosted people before, giving certain circumstances. But in that, knowing how you feel now, like, do you feel obligated? Like, now, damn, I felt this way. I'm going to make sure nobody else feels if, that way. If Let it's a situation something. where, like, I've been talking to someone that long and that consistently, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, but if it's, like, early on, you know, like, even just, like, a couple days, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if you're talking to someone for a week, no, I'm not worried about giving you an explanation. Yeah. But um, something like that, <laughs> something like that, like, yes, like, you absolutely need to communicate okay. with somebody. If you don't want to talk to them more, then just say that. Like, I'm grown. Like, I didn't even yeah. want to fuck with you. I didn't want to be your girlfriend anyways. Okay. Um, so okay. it's like, <laughs> has anyone? Has anyone? That's else? why he goes to your <laughs> girl. Like, like has okay. anyone else? Be mad, but be respectfully. Mad. No, like, you acting like, like the guys, no. and you be like, girl. you didn't respect I me. Didn't I didn't fuck with you anyway. You. <laughs> okay. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> didn't, never liked you. Um, has anyone else here ever been ghosted before? Or no. I mean, I, I think I've been on podcast. I've ghosted, ghosted like a lot after by one person. Ooh. We ghost Multiple each times? other. Mm. We ghost each other. That's not it was really, a, that's not really that ghosting. is ghosting. That's phasing. I'm not no. That's yeah. ghosting. That's, that's, that's being on and on. Multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you can't. Yeah. Girl, ghost is like that's you disappear. Not ghosting. Like you disappear and then come back a year later. That's Have, ghosting. No, ghost that's just, and come back to life. That's just <laughs> on and off behavior, girl. That's not ghosting. That's Once not, you're a ghost, you're supposed to stay a ghost. Then I know it's not. Okay, so I come back from time to time. So I guess we kind of talked about it, but just people to put a clarification on it. Like, what would you say? is the usual reason like you go somebody is it because like you just don't see like anything with them like the the light stuff not anything where you're serious with somebody the light stuff is it normally because just, like you we're just we're not don't... clicking like okay. we're not because i'm not gonna lie like i guess i i don't know if this is ghosting maybe i have ghosted someone because there was recently someone in my phone and like y'all like i don't like to text mm-hmm. and like i've already made it clear like he had a timeline Mm-hmm. And after this timeline, after we go past this, like, week, mm-hmm. that's it. And so we were talking about, like, I had went, uh, of course, we went to Spain. And, like, we were talking about Spain and going places. And I remember he said, oh, we can go here. And I sent him the Nicki Minaj emoji, like, like you know, like, nigga. Mm-hmm. And so then he's like, I mean, I need a lifetime partner. Y'all, I stopped responding until this to day. That? that was two weeks ago. Like, mm-hmm. I stopped responding. Because it's like, to me, so it's just he like. Re- has he re- reached out again? Yes, I don't respond. Just like, respond? it's just because okay. it's like. Yo, like I'm not, I'm yeah. not here for this, and mm-hmm. like, I'm, I, I'm too old for the shenanigans at this point. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When I, I got normally time for that. ghost somebody, it's because like, and again, I, I like ghosts. We're not ever serious. It's because like I just don't see anything with you. And you know, mm-hmm. yeah, like we yeah, just like, like you yeah. said something like we're just not compatible. Like I have my non-negotiables, and the moment you say something that's against that non-negotiable, mm-hmm. like I'm just good on you. And see, for me, um, mine was kind of like how you were saying like. The reason why you ghost people is because the reaction you get out of men. Mm -hmm. And I actually went on a date and I saw like, I mean, they weren't even like red flags. Like, what's the like a a brighter color than red at this point? Like, that's the flags I saw. Green or red, like neon yellow. Like, it was just like (laughs) saw orange. They were whoa. And so for me, if I had like if I had told this person I didn't want to talk to them anymore, Mm -hmm. they would have been at my front door. (laughs) Oh dang, that's the worst. Yeah, so. I was like, no, like I actually like have to like leave this person alone. And mm-hmm. even to this day, like sometimes this person will still like they make multiple accounts and be like my runaway bride. And I'm like, whoa, Ew, that's like weird. 
Mm-hmm. Let's okay, yeah. you dodged a bullet. <laughs> so, I definitely um, dodged a bullet. I want to take it a little petty now. I want to know, would you ever go somebody if the sex was not satisfying the first time? Okay, so I'll tell y'all a story. So back in college, um, <laughs> there's this guy or whatever, my um, Kim partner or whatever. Y'all, I'm sorry. Not like Kim partner. Y'all yeah. say y'all doing experiments inside <laughs> no, the classroom stop and it, outside? Stop it, stop it, oh, okay. It was honestly... It shouldn't have happened. It just happened, y'all. And so, you know, we were studying. We were camp partners, like I said. And so we were studying or whatever. And, like, out of nowhere, smoking and drinking. Out of nowhere, y'all, we're having sex. But I didn't feel anything. And I stopped talking. Y'all, I literally stopped talking to him. Like, but stopped, y'all were camp like, partners. And we're in the same class. We were not partners anymore. And he would <laughs> try to talk to me in class. I stopped sitting by him. I sat way across. Even I took my final on a different day. Like, I stopped talking to him because I was just like, I didn't know how to like talk about that experience. So young mm-hmm. and childish. Because now as an adult, if I didn't like something, I'm able to voice like, I didn't like that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. But because I was so young, I didn't know how to like have that conversation. And he was a year younger than me. So I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to say this and like ruin him as a man <laughs> or guy, oh boy, whatever. And like, yeah, y'all, like until this day, I haven't talked to him since. I to mean, this day. Me personally, Mm-mm. I would like, Literally, the sex would have to be, like, really terrible, you know? And <laughs> it was, girl. And it has <laughs> happened before where it's just, like, I'm, like, you know, like, you're just laying there and you're, like, looking up at the person and you're just, like, I oh, my laying, gosh, girl. like, why are you on top of me? Like, what Ew. is going on? Like, you know how you have, like, that outer body experience? You're just, mm-hmm. like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, what, like what's really <laughs> going on? Oh, my gosh, sorry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it would really have to be that for it me. me of waiting to excel that girl <laughs> yes the beginning of the movie she's having um sex with her co-worker and she's just looking at him like and i could i know what's going through her head like how did i get here yeah what you know hell? how you think about like everything yeah. like how you got there but yeah for me personally if it was like that i would ghost him without a doubt like not mm-hmm. but it would get i would block like Ew, messages wouldn't block. even come through yikes okay <laughs> okay i understand it happens Blog messages wouldn't it, even come through. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was before happened. all that happened. Y'all. See, and, uh, no, and right? that, that is, was all before the time, and that is cl- clear communication. Like when no. your messages don't come through, that is. I feel like that's more Nikki, clear than Nikki, ghosting. How you, now you reneging? No, because like, okay. you just said no. Yeah, it, there's no, a set, Nikki, that's just said saying, ghosting because, is not communication, but then you saying when your messages don't go through, that's clear. Communication. I have to be alive to block you. You know what that's I'm saying? Not like true. Maybe someone's phone's like, out of service. No, right? I have to be alive to actually like block you. So that therefore you know that I took the necessary steps for you yourself. not to contact me. Maybe even contacted her. Yeah, no. I'm like, this entire yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah, kind now of you would ghost in. Now you're against ghost in. Now no, you I understand actually, ghost in. No, like, I said I've always understood. I think there's certain circumstances where you can go. You said people. it was childish. I'm gonna. I'm gonna oh, yeah. have to quote you. You said that. No, that was the. Nikki you, said, you I don't fuck with people I'm who ghost people, so you don't fuck with yourself. I'm, ba- I'm basing that off of the ghosting experience I recently have. I feel like in that situation that was very childish, but I have agreed that if it's, it's cool, someone that it's you, okay. it's if, there's no if there's it's no accountability, y'all. If there's no attachment like, in a week, you know what I'm saying? Okay, whatever. Like people shouldn't really take that to heart, mm-hmm. right? But I'm saying like months in consistency, yes, that's right. very childish. Like you should be able to communicate at that point. Yeah. Y'all saw the footage, y'all. So people are gonna get real groovy. What? <laughs> they are not. They, they're not. not. They never. They're gonna be like flip flopper. People <laughs> always. Like, people actually agree with me more than they agree with y'all. I don't. Uh, I don't read. I don't be uh, lying. But, okay, comment this. fan. I don't be paying attention. So <laughs> I don't I was mad, girl, don't be, don't be mad because I'm a world. You set yourself up for that. No, no, mad. Mad. Y'all, it's that. It's that guy who be sending her them clips. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's who gas that, her up. That's you thinking that every, that's everybody. <laughs> that's what? who gas her up. Nick, you are so <laughs> Sorry. right here. I feel you. Yeah. Oh, I oh my God. Say, yeah, right here. What you said. Oh my God. Shout out to everyone because I do see the DMs. I do see like. Oh, right. It's a head ass for me. When people say, wow. Wow, it's you have head ass you thing. have so much sense, like <laughs> right. I oh, get Nikki, it, like Nikki. I see okay. it. Go ahead and <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, given everything that we've all discussed, Nikki's already made it clear she thinks it's childish. Has right. she made that clear? I think <laughs> she is she's for it. I told you she's a flip flopper. She is okay. So, given what we've spoken for about thus far, <laughs> like after all the the like perspectives we get given, mm-hmm. like if you were to leave her tomorrow, would you still go somebody again? I don't. I mean, I yes. I, I like unintentionally yeah, ghost like, yeah. people. So yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Okay, we'll follow up with you every yeah. episode from every here. On I episode. really don't. I'll be. We said given all circumstances. So even we talking about even the little things. Mm-hmm. 
So choose your answer wisely. Day two, he said, let's go. All, 50, 50. Okay, given all circumstances. Given all circumstances, would you still go somebody? That's I why the, the question I asked at the beginning I was just like, him. is. I, I can communicate that. I do not ever. I don't believe acceptable. in Dutch. Like, I can communicate that I do not believe in Dutch dates. Yeah. So, therefore, I would not go someone you know, some actually can't communicate actually, that. Actually, you, you know have that, right? to know that as a man. Don't approach yeah. women like that. That's not okay. Yeah. Like, you're not going to. I mean, but if some women are accepting it, don't how put can, me, you know? Don't like, put me to no test. Like, I'm not a, I'm, <laughs> I'm not job. taking an SAT. Like, no. Okay. So, you know, I want to fail take the every poll. time. Do you think ghosting is childish? Yes. I don't think it's childish, Michelle. Mm-mm. Nikki? I do think it. In, Depending just on neutral, the, girl. Depending, I'm neutral. Just I'm neutral. I'm Switzerland. Okay. Let's, y'all, let's, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wanted to get clar- <laughs> clarification here because people think it's childish, but like they it partake is. during giving cer- cer- certain circumstances. So I feel like if you partake at all, you can't consider it childish. I've been childish. Like mm. it's child. Oh. I've been childish. Thank you for owning Nikki. Have you been childish? She's been Switzerland. Mm. No, I think all, yeah. mm. all my stuff has been <laughs> all right <laughs> justified. <laughs> all right, let's pack this one up. Anyways, <laughs> okay, so I kind of do want to change the topic to a different direction. So really quickly, guys, do you know, does everyone here know what quiet quitting is? Hell yeah. No. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to kind of give a definition. And if I, my definition I've, is not good enough, anybody can jump in who does know and kind of fill on it. I'm a career quiet quitter. Right. So quiet quitting is essentially, and I'm going to speak to it in a job sense, where you work at a job and you have quiet quit in the sense that instead of you normally giving your normal 120, I don't know why you're ever giving 120, or you're 100%, like you choose to give your job 80%. Like you just stop, you, you show up to work every day, but, but it's you're just not like, showing up. You're to not work showing up. Day, like no. you're giving the bare minimum, you're not yeah. giving them anything. And essentially that is quiet quitting. So in regards to that, we've talked a lot about like ghosting and stuff like that. I want you guys to think about like, have you ever been in a relationship with somebody and the guy you were dating like low key quiet quit? the relationship in the sense of like yeah. he just kind of just stopped showing up like he's acting he different sure he's he sure did <laughs> girl not too happy tears <laughs> been there too but anyways like do y'all have y'all ever experienced that like because ghosting is one thing quiet quitting is another like they're still there yeah. but their actions are showing you blankly mm-hmm. like I don't want to fucking be here yeah basically where they oh, want you oh, to break up with them oh, but they because they know. don't want to do it about themselves that. <laughs> see I, I feel like it's the opposite I feel like I'm more of a quiet quitter Man, I don't think they quiet quit. They, they sure show their ass. They come in. <laughs> they try to get written up every day. Okay. They are quitting. They want to get expelled. They want to ex- get expelled. That's when they'll quit. When they they coming in late, taking two hour lunch breaks. They <laughs> doing time card fraud. Like you said, you came here at eight a.m. So I saw you walking here at one okay. p.m. Right. Like why would you write and sign at eight a.m. knowing that the cameras is on you? Once, like, once I kind of heard about the term like quiet quitting, and I kind of like you know tapped mm-hmm. in with it i'm not gonna lie like my unpopular opinion is that men definitely quiet quit relationships oh all and the i'm time. speaking mm-hmm. from my experience because i definitely was in a relationship where i thought it was going good and all of a sudden it was going really bad and i, I could not pinpoint and it was like this man just literally stopped showing up to the relationship like yeah. was giving me a very hard time and i'm like bro like what do i do like i literally was at the point where i was like what is going on and mm-hmm. he would not communicate with me and in that i was like i just wanted to break up with him and it was like that i feel like like i said unpopular i feel like that's men's tactic to make a woman break up with them instead of them having the Absolutely. courage to in a relationship and, and I, what i don't I, like about mm-hmm. that is because it's just like a lot of women don't want to just leave a relationship like Absolutely. i want to make it work so you're pushing me to positions to break up with you when i really don't even want to leave you clear communication is breaking up with me so i'll be like damn this nigga just don't fuck with me let me move on but you forcing me to do something i don't want to do trying to think maybe he's me maybe he's going yeah, through a hard like time that's games. manipulative yeah. You're playing mind I mean, games. For me, game. I have definitely dealt with like a quiet quitter, like marathon runner, you know, because like <laughs> literally it went for a very long time. God, like, but, you know, ooh. at the same time, I really don't think that men want to break up. Yes, they do. You no, know, because I really do feel like men, sometimes they they're like content. You know what I'm saying? Like they just rather just stay in that and. They don't realize like what their actions are truly showing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it just takes them a while to get out of that. But mm-hmm. I think as women, like whenever, like, cause we're communicators, like we're really like, what's going on? Like what's mm-hmm. wrong? Like, let's talk about it. And after a while, after we've asked that so many times and haven't gotten any, like there's no changes in your actions. There's no change mm-hmm. in your words. Then we just leave, you know, yeah. but, but I have to disagree with you because men know that about us and that's why they will do what we allow. So the reason why they're not going to leave you because we're allowing them to quiet quit and we gonna tolerate it. That's why they're never going to go anywhere. Like, cause you already, you just said that, Oh, a man doesn't want to leave. Um, girl, they be want to leave. They just don't know how to leave. But so like they're you, waiting for you. They don't, they're waiting for you to make that decision to leave. So then it's over. But do y'all ever feel, you know do y'all ever feel that y'all possibly leave too soon? 
Like y'all, y'all actually quit. I leave, y'all actually I quit leave too, too, too early. Quiet late. Quit. Yeah, quiet no. quit or quit the relationship. No, so like let's say that the man is quiet quitting. Mm-hmm. And do you ever feel like you possibly like jumped the gun a little too soon and you like ended the relationship? If you're giving and y'all could have y'all could have possi- y'all could have possibly worked on things. I, the <sighs> reason why I disagree with that is because when that man was quiet quitting on mm-hmm. me, it's because he did not want to be in a relationship that, that's, anymore. That's he, the time he, he could have been was, working. He was doing other things, and so yeah. to me, it was just like you kind of forced my hand, and once mm-hmm. I forced my hand, like the truth came out yeah. of why he was quiet yeah. quitting me. So to me, it was kind of just like you put me through months of of like turmoil of like damn, like what's wrong with the relationship? I'm trying to actively fix it, and you just wanted to break up with me, and you chose yeah. not to. So to me, that's a slap on my face. Like not to say that it would. And, if you work with me, if any man breaks with me, I'm going to be hurt. But to quiet quit me for yeah. months and take me through term, turmoil where I'm like, what is going on? I'm trying to yeah. fight for my relationship. And you know that you just would rather leave me. And you get to the point where you do something where I absolutely have to break up with you. That is foul as hell. Yeah, that, that is yeah. foul. Like, you're, oh, I want to say that I can't. Sorry, yeah, to answer your question, yeah. I don't think I've ever left a relationship to... Okay, let me not. Okay, I've left a talking stage too yeah. early and definitely regretted it, but for, for different reasons that we won't talk about today. But I've definitely, in most of my relationships, I feel like I mm-hmm. leave the relationships too late because, on the other hand, I feel like I'm a quiet quitter. I feel like I'm the type of person where I'm so afraid to leave a p- relationships too early because I don't want to have that regret. I don't want to sit here and think about maybe it was me, maybe I overreacted. So mm-hmm. I sit there and I kind of do the bare minimum. I kind of work through the relationship while I'm watching. And seeing is this person changing, and I, and I check out. I'm not nagging anymore. I'm just saying, okay, you know what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, if I don't speak up and I let you run this relationship the way you feel like it, you are comfortable letting it run. Let me see mm-hmm. where it leads. And when I see you run that relationship to the <laughs> ground, <laughs> mm-hmm. then I leave. Okay, <laughs> because that, like, that's my out. You like, know, literally. and sometimes I can't agree. I think I might be a quiet quitter, but you know, it's, I, I'm a quiet quitter. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm at to the point where I'm like, you know what? The one thing you do wrong that's giving me my out. You know, like yeah, and you're, it might, you're waiting. Exactly. You're waiting. And it might waiting. be something that's so like late. it might be Exit something strategy. my so minute. But as soon as you do it, and I'm at that point where I'm already like mm-hmm. at the end, I'll leave. You but know, honestly, so, but I feel but like But my thing is like in in knowing what I know now after experiencing being quiet, mm-hmm. quitting a relationship, like knowing what that looks like, that's clear communication. I'm leaving. And if I yeah. quiet, and if I leave, mm-hmm. like you said, am I leaving too soon? Oh fucking well. If I wasn't yeah. meant to be, if I qu- quit that too soon, and you really mm-hmm. fuck with me, you want to be with me, you'll come back around and you'll try to work it out. But th- honestly, being quiet, quitting a relationship, when you really think about it, it's very clear communication. Mm-hmm. Me trying to figure out what the issue was, yeah. A- in hindsight, I should have just left. Like honestly, it would have saved me so much time, so much heartbreak. It would have saved me a lot of time. Like well, I'm not saying it would have been easier. I would have equally been confused because I'm leaving a relationship very early before trying to work through it. But in hindsight, it was very clear. I just chose to act as if yeah. it wasn't. I just so feel like I think as like human beings, men and women, we gotta honestly communicate and also learn like read situations mm-hmm. for what it is. Sometimes I feel like we be a picture is painted and we see something else, and it's like mm-hmm. no jump ship. But then you know like, what I mean? when we think we about leave, these different, like, we wait too long. When we think about these different terms, I think it's easier for us to be like, okay, let's leave like in a relationship. But what mm-hmm. do you do like? if potentially like your husband is like going through like a quiet quitting stage like are you just um, now that's like not a husband is different that's, than a relationship that's what i'm saying no and i'm saying that but it's mm. like you get, see then we're going to counseling because yeah, how are you quiet different. quitting in a marriage yeah. yeah okay so so let me at least ex- say what quiet Please. quitting means to me so i know that, that we're on the same page to me quiet quitting is you have mentally checked out of the relationship. You're mm-hmm. still showing up. You're still doing the bare minimum. You haven't broken up with me. If I ask you what's wrong, you're going to say nothing. You're not confrontational. Mm-hmm. But the things that make the relationship work, you're not doing. Mm-hmm. We're not going on dates. You're not going out of your way to make me happy. You're not going out of your way to make, mm-hmm. make me smile. You're just showing up to the relationship mm-hmm. and that's it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's very like, it's kind of selfish in a way because I feel like the reason why men even do that is out of cowardice. It's, they don't know what's on the other side of the foot. They don't want to mm-hmm. leave the relationship because they don't, they're afraid to be single or they're yeah. afraid mm-hmm. to make you mad or they're afraid of what th- that may look like. So in their head, they're like, well, you know what? Let me just do what I can do right now and maybe she'll break mm-hmm. up with me. But do you think that quiet quitting is the end all be all? Do you think that that is like a final, like them actually saying like, hey, I do not want to be in this relationship or can you go through a stage 
of possible quiet quitting. I feel like it's worse. I would rather, if you feel like you do not have the energy let's to continue up. with this relationship, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Right. Let's why? Take, mm-hmm. Why take me to the um, through the emotional Emotion. trauma and, and psychological and trauma of trying to figure right. out where we've gone wrong and trying to make you happy and trying to figure out what I can do to make this work? Just let me go so I, I can heal and have some mental health. Mm-hmm. And I think that in our world, like that's the problem in this day in society, like we do that instead Mm -hmm. of just communicate yo i need a break from this i right now i am not feeling this relationship and i i can tell you can't aren't either let's take a week but the thing about break let's take a break is the moment someone hears a break i don't take breaks but but, but, some people people think that way and i'm not gonna lie you gotta grow up where i'm at now sometimes you break because you don't you don't know like sometimes people need a break to just kind of like recalibrate because you know what, I mean? what do you think a separation is a separation is a break before the divorce mm-hmm. i don't believe you know in saying? breaks but you need I don't, to I don't, the thing is i don't i don't want to i don't necessarily want to believe in breaks but, but, but giving is just like give a rest sometimes like, you just need a period of time yeah. to not talk to somebody to kind of figure out some things Absolutely. like while i don't I, trust me i was anti-breaks mm-hmm. but until in certain you were forced in one. until you are in one until mm-hmm. you kind of see like okay what a break could do for a situation because yeah. I'd rather take a break than you be quiet quitting me and me showing up every day trying to give you 100 and you're giving 50. Yeah. Like, I'd rather us take a little break. Mm-hmm. So then maybe I'd get some clarity. Maybe I could realize, yeah. damn, like, not being around you really is showing but me that like, you really, really not showing like up. do feel like breaks work? Do y'all really feel like people they come do. together after breaks? I'm not going to yeah. lie. The like, ones I've seen, yeah. But I feel but like there has to be yeah. st- protocols yeah. in place for that break. Yeah. I feel like just be, let's just go, not talk for a week. Or, no, it's just like, a break. I like breaks when we call it space. Like to me, yeah, like, let's, let's yeah. take some space. That, you know what, space right. sounds a little less heavy, and it's just like mm-hmm. I think we need some space. I feel like space is we need heavier. some time. No, because sometimes I I'm not gonna space. lie. It's just like a like literally you're putting a break, space. a pause. Like it's, no, it's a pause. Like you need some time to figure stuff stuff out, and I need some time to figure stuff out because right now it's like we're head to head, and it's just not working right now. Mm-hmm. And space usually just like two, couple, three weeks. Breaks sometimes I feel like are like a month. And to mm-hmm. me, I'm not. I'm, I'm with Nikki. I don't believe in breaks for the mm-hmm. simple fact that if we are on a break, it does. That does not mean that we're going to get back together. Exactly. We're taking a break for you to figure stuff out because right. what if at the end of this break you figure out that you don't want to be with me? And, oh, or no, I so would I you rather you so I don't want to be with you? Okay. Okay. That's what so, I'm saying. So that's why I feel like a break is still a breakup. It's just a nice way to say it because exactly. so whether it's, it's not promised that we're going to get back together. So whether it's and space. So, it's space. so whether it's space or it's a break, wouldn't you rather have somebody tell you that yep. than for them to Absolutely. show up every day quiet quitting you? Because we've all said we've experienced that and we know that feels shitty. I'd rather somebody somebody tell me space break, whatever term we want to put on. I'd rather somebody tell me they need that than to show up to the relationship giving me 25% or, and I'm stressed yeah. out about it. I'm not, mm-hmm. to, not, and again, that doesn't say when you tell me that I'm not going to all of a sudden not be stressed. I'm going to be stressed regardless. Let's keep it a book. Like, okay, my <laughs> nigga says to me, tells me he needs space. Break. I'm stressing. Crying, but tears. I would rather that than to me to be like, at least lets me know something is wrong. And that allows me to take yeah. a step back and evaluate, okay, like, yeah. what is going on? Like, is he going through something personal? Is it just the relationship? Let me reflect mm-hmm. as well myself mm-hmm. because sometimes, like, when you're in the midst of something, you don't realize how things look or how things are happening. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'd rather that than just be quiet. Clear. No, I agree. Completely agree. Yeah. I like, like I said, communicate. That's mm-hmm. really all it comes down to. Like, don't, yeah. don't ghost me. Don't quiet quit me. Don't do so, none of that, y'all. <laughs> we've talked a lot about men quiet quitting. Have y'all quiet quit? In a relationship before? Yeah. Have I quiet quit? In, in a, a relationship? In a, in a relationship? No. I'm always the one that's get like I'm I'm like Thomas the Train. I'm always going like 150%. Not Thomas the yeah, Train. I know. <laughs> I be, girl, I'll be quiet yeah. quit. Have you quiet quit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Unfortunately. Because it's like sometimes mm-hmm. you just like check out. Like sometimes it's just like mm-hmm. it's just a relationship so... though. A relationship. Like I've, I've yes. Yeah. Like I a have talk, a talking <laughs> a talking <laughs> like stage. Event. I've def I have quite quit. Mm-hmm. But like a, a relationship I haven't. I did. I probably wouldn't again. I remember even at the end of it, like mm-hmm. I swore it was mutual. Cause I I probably quite I think I quite quit the last two years, I'm not gonna lie. But I was in it, but in my head I was just like, this is like I was not so checked work, out because yeah. so much had happened, which is why I understand a lot of times when men fuck up with somebody and they end up not being with that person. Because sometimes when somebody fucks up, no matter what they do in the back of my head, I'm just like, damn, like I do not want like you've tainted this relationship so much that the future mm-hmm. that I see with you is like it's it, not a, it's, impossible. it's not the future that I want for myself. The trust is mm-hmm. gone. Like I'm trying, but it's like I can't. And I mean, towards the end, I remember just talking to him. and I'm like, you know, things just haven't been the same for a while. I know you you've noticed that. And he was like, what? I don't wait, notice what I'm just like, like the oh, see this is why I quiet quit your ass like you didn't even realize nigga I checked 
out and have been checked out. What mm-hmm. the fuck is wrong with you? <sighs> I've definitely um, in talking stages quite quick, mm-hmm. but I've never done it in a relationship. And I feel mm-hmm. like the reasons why I've done it, like in a talking stage is because like that person has probably already shown like once or twice that like, okay, like I can no longer take you seriously as like a potential dating partner in a sense. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that person is still trying, but I'm like, I've already decided like, that's it. Oh, that's it for me. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is like, it, and I just had a conversation with somebody like, once I'm off you, I'm off you. Like, Ooh, you know what I mean? Once totally, I'm off you, I cannot yes. like somebody a second time. And if I do, it's further down Change the line. You know what I mean? Behavior. Like, because once you've shown me that like, you're not for me or like, you just cannot give me what I need. I'm off of you. Mm-hmm. And and if and if I choose to keep you in my life, that's my business. Like, I'm bad about just cutting people straight out. But, like, if I choose to still entertain you, I'm mm-hmm. low-key quiet quitting. Like, we can still communicate if I if I choose to do that with you. But I've already decided, like, we're not going anywhere from here. And I've quiet quit. And you can continue to tell me how much you want to be with me. But to me, it's like, I'm not entertaining that fact anymore because you lost me already. And it's so crazy you say that. Like, when you say, like, you're off somebody, you're really off of them. And it's, it's scary to me because, like, I've had such strong feelings for somebody like, you know, mm-hmm. damn near love them. And like when I'm finally like over them, I'm like, damn, I'm actually over you. And I never mm-hmm. thought I could like see that day, you know, because right. originally I'm like, oh, this is like I'm in love. I'm this when and that. that. Shit hits. But when it hits, it hits. And it's actually like low key scary. You know what I'm saying? It is because it's like when you think about all the bullshit you put up with somebody and you finally get to that point where it's just like, bro, mm-hmm. like what? Like that, <laughs> you're like, thank God I'm here. Yeah. But it's like, bro, like. Why did it take me so long to get here? And it's funny because just like it's normally like you reach that point before the other person. So it's kind of just like you're looking at them like, bro, like there's no reason why I should ever even like even fuck with you. You know what I mean? So it's like it's weird being on the other side of that when it's all said and done. But tell me how y'all quiet quit a job. Because I really oh, I I don't I'm quiet quitting right now. I don't do anything. (laughs) I take more breaks than work. I'm quiet quitting. (laughs) For me, when I think about, I have a quiet quit in a minute. I feel like when I quiet quit, it was years and years ago. I was on work at a finance company, but I'm try- I don't remember exactly what happened. But like, I got to the point where I used to give like a hundred and fifty percent. I gave the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. They asked me to do extra. I had attitude. No. I changed my um little chat unavailable. Like I'm working hard. Like you couldn't even message me. Like they had to email me. Like I literally made it to the point where like, if you want to fucking talk to me, supervisors or whoever, you're going to have to send me an email. I made it where they could not chat with me. I was short. I remember like I was so unavailable. good Thank at you. quiet quitting. Like one time Great. like I had a one-on-one with my supervisor like for like a performance review and she's like, I just... I just, there's some days like when I come in, like, I just, I don't know if I should speak to you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're my supervisor. So I was like, at any point in time, like you should, if you want to speak to me, speak to me. Like, I don't care what vibes you're getting from me. Like, I'm not going to coddle you. Like as a supervisor, you yeah, need to be able to you, learn how to deal with difficult to, people. And I don't give a fuck what my face how says. To problem solve and deal exactly. with difficult situations. Like, Cause a lot of people in these super, mm-hmm. that are supervisors shouldn't be supervisors. Yeah. And that is the problem. And, and that's I'm why not, people are quiet quitting. And I'm not going to lie. Like I was very much quiet quitting, but at the same time, like if you're in a position of power, it doesn't matter how the hell my attitude and this is when I, I worked this girl, was years ago when I worked in the girl. office like don't get it wrong I was definitely giving hella attitude but for you to tell me like some days I don't know if I sh- if I should approach you as, you're a supervisor regardless as, of what I'm giving you to you you should learn how to approach foot, me you should always and then it does not matter you should always be that one hey Jory how are you doing like that is your role that is mm-hmm. your job like, you shouldn't have been promoted to a supervisor guessing? if you can't interact with difficult being people in a, being a regular employee talking about I don't know what if is, I should speak to so you so the rest of y'all what is quiet quitting in the workplace look like Justin. <laughs> I mean, for me, the only time I ever <laughs> y'all, Loki, that was the way I had answer. the way I had to quiet quit was like I had to bring up my mental health. I was like, right. girl, <laughs> not FMLA. No, I was just girl. like, because I really need to take this. Uh, this is when I was trying to jump into travel nursing, and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, like these these hospitals, they were um. They were blackmailing you. They were saying, like, if you if you leave to go travel, like, you're going to be blackballed. You can't ever be hired no, again. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you can be hired. So I was like, oh, my like, gosh. I, gotta, I really got to figure out a way to, like, go make this money. So I was like, mm-hmm. like, uh, a situation happened at work. I got into it with a charge nurse. And I was just like, you know what? Like, I came to the manager. I was like, this place is just not good for my health. And she was like, yeah, I have been realizing you've been coming in with a bad, like, not on, with the best <laughs> attitude of, like, Bitch, what? Like, what right. you mean? Like, not you saying I have an attitude? <laughs> now she putting something on me. My, me, me, my niece thinks she's coming in with good attitude. Thank you. I was like, I thought Tell I was you coming, really feel. I thought I was coming in with, like the you know uh, employee of the month, but mm-hmm. no. yeah. So I just literally like was like, you know, my mental health is just being affected. Like mm-hmm. this job is like really just wearing on me. Like it's just time I take a break. 
Little did they know. <laughs> I was so, on a flight. I guess before, <laughs> not on a flight. So I guess before you guys even got to the point of quitting, like, do you feel like, did something happen that made you quiet quit? Could, okay. your, could your job have done something okay. more to before you got to that point? Like, what, what drives people to quiet quit in the workplace? Like, this is my thing. Because, like, you know, I've been in management, and now, right now, I'm not in management. And, like, being on the other side of things, it kind of is, like, a little triggering because when you see, first of all, I have, like, a team member where, like, they try to regulate, and it's like, you're not management. So you stop trying to tell me what, one thing's for sure, if my superior is not saying I'm doing something wrong or, like, not telling me to do something, I am not about to start listening to you. And so I remember I had, I, my last one-on-one, like, I literally brought it up because, a situation happened between two co coworkers, the same girl telling someone what to do, and like the girl was like, "I got like this." I know she's black, <laughs> and she's like, "I got this, Allison. Thank you, though." And like the supervisor <laughs> was just watching them go back and forth, back and forth. And I, to me, I'm not gonna lie, I thought that was very unprofessional. I'm like, this went on way too long. Like, mm -hmm. it should have been a thing where it's like you immediately stepped in as soon as you felt the first attitude, you should have said something. And so when I was in my one on one, like she basically tried to make me feel a way for like saying how like basically tell, I kind of told her how to do her job because I'm just like as a man, she's like, mm -hmm. what do you think I'm doing that you think I should do better? I'm like, I just feel like as a manager when things happen in the chat and employees are going back and forth you need to be stepping in way before it starts getting to disrespect mm -hmm. and i feel like there's been several situations where i've watched you just sit there and let things get bad and then you go after the wrong person you're not going after the person that's always causing the trouble mm -hmm. y'all i got off that one-on-one -on -one. she's gonna call me again she's like you know what paulette i know like we already told you that there's like a if you want to move to a different position you have to wait a x amount of months she's like you can start looking at new positions and i'll approve you to go and i'm like <laughs> oh bitch you ain't getting work for me now like oh so basically you're telling me fuck me because i told you what to do wow <laughs> okay manager so i, like, I feel like that's i'm like i'm out of here <laughs> like, you know, i feel that i think for me like i'm and again i'm speaking from a job that i had years ago like i've always been the type like i go above and beyond at work mm -hmm. that's just that's just me like that's just who i am as, as, as a person like i've always completed my work early that's just who i am and i think that in that like the job that I was at, like, I always had exceeds expectations on, like, my work review and stuff like that. Like, it was to the point where, like, I would finish my work so early. They would pull me to help other teams and stuff like that. And there was a point in time, like, where I wanted to actually Suffice. move. Exactly. <laughs> And I did it because, like, in the day, if I'm there, like, it's boring to be at work. And Girl, when you, you, when you work in an office idle. and there's nothing to fucking do, like, at that Who point, like, I, I don't mind doing other things. You know what I mean? But there was a point in time where I actually <laughs> wanted to transfer to the Atlanta office. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Like, this should be a very easy transition move. Like, I know exactly what I'm doing. My assistant manager at the time, she had just transferred from the Atlanta office. So I'm thinking, okay, I just got to do is pick up the phone. Like, I got a great employee. No, they made me fucking interview for the position. Girl, they and they made me they shit. made me jump through hoops just oh. to come back and be like, oh, like you need more experience. And I'm like, I come to this bitch every day mm -hmm. and I assist three different teams in one day. And I was so pissed off at them, I quiet quit. And from mm -hmm. that day forward, like my actions showed, like I quiet quit. So there's nothing that they could have done to change it because I was already giving more. But to me, it was kind of just like you want me to do A, B, C your way to get to Atlanta, but. That's fuck like and literally yeah. the older people and it's always the older people you work with they were just like bro like they're like Joy it makes no sense like there's no reason why Stacy shouldn't have picked up the phone and said hey she just transferred from the Atlanta office she could have just been like yo I have an it associate just been an easy, who wants like, to move to Atlanta yeah take her but they made me interview and jump through hoops just to be like oh you didn't get it and they try to make girl. me follow this other career path and I was like you know what I'm going back to school and that's what forced me to go back to get girl. my master's degree and I quiet quit and I literally gave them shit for the last two and a half years that I worked there until I finished my degree but it was kind of just like you cannot give these jobs y'all all like literally I, they don't care about. You. that happened to me too and like i started just looking at work differently because like literally mm -hmm. i literally should i was a shoe in for being practice manager nikki and michelle know i was a shoe in okay and like literally they gave it to some 21 year old girl who didn't have any not saying school is everything but it's like i literally was working on my mba everything like i was like the perfect candidate and they gave it to her because they didn't want to pay me Mm -hmm. So after that, I was just like, you know what? Mm -hmm. And that's what I was gonna say. For me, I'm really, looking at jobs totally different. Like, if you're not trying to pay me, I'm bouncing. Really like, I really don't mm -hmm. care. So like, really, that's mm -hmm. all it comes back to for me. It's the money it's for money. me. Money, yeah. money. Like I money. can go into any job, anything, and do I'm anything paid. if I'm getting paid properly. Mm -hmm. Pro right. But where heavy on properly? But if I'm not getting paid properly, I'm coming right. in there annoyed. I'm coming in there mad that I'm not even mad. I'm just coming and doing nothing. Like because at the end of the day, like y'all wonder why, especially in healthcare, y'all wonder why the turnover is just so crazy. Like y'all do not pay people well yeah. and so people are always quiet quitting because it's like as soon as they start they're already quitting because it's like they're not making anything mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like at the end of the day if i'm not making anything what's gonna drive me to perform well at work yeah money mm -hmm. so that is what it is 
So I, quiet quitting is low key like a new word, and girl, and the girls, it's and the, taking and, over, and the men been arguing about it online. And so one of the questions that was brought for this conversation was to ask like. Do you guys feel as though like our the uh, our parents like the generation above us like do you feel like they were quiet quitters or no? No, they were too loyal to jobs. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely not. I think that too loyal. The mentality that our parents had was mm-hmm. like, if you found a job, like you're supposed to be loyal. You're supposed yeah. to stay there for forty, fifty years. You're supposed yeah. to just retire out of there. But that's quiet quitting, because like in a sense, like. I feel like the younger generation, we're quick to leave a job and go somewhere else. I feel like our parents, because they have family and because they wanted to be loyal, they were quiet quitters. A lot of our parents can... felt were in positions that they hated, but they, but they stayed were... because they were trying to provide but for I, their but family. But they were still going hard every day. Yeah. All that, I that think that that's, that's the difference. That's not quiet quitting. And I think that's the difference, That's just work hustling. You can't, you can't quiet quit yeah. for 40 years. You can't. That's not quiet you quitting. Can. You can't. Absolutely. No, can. but no, I've can. seen it with my you eyes can, in, but in workplaces. Our parents' generation, they were not quiet quitting. They were actually hustling and working. Because even I talked to someone, is it baby boomers? I even had a conversation with a baby boomer. And, like, they literally, we were going back and forth. Because, like, the way I viewed work and how they viewed work, they were like, whoa, like, but, this but, world is doomed. I'm like, no. like, Did you guys ever really ask your parents were they quiet quitting? You don't know what they were putting up. Because then they were trying to provide for the family. Absolutely. And because they were so loyal, like, we assume our parents showed up every day to their job giving 100%. But how do you know your parent wasn't in their quiet, low-key quiet the quitting? the only thing my mom ever taught me was... If they ask you to train somebody to do your job, don't train them as well as you actually Abs- know your that, job. That part. Hmm. That part. She's like, because... Don't ever train them better than you. She's like, don't ever train them better than you. She's like, because... You're training all, your replacement. Exactly. That's all they're going to do <laughs> is just try to replace you. <laughs> You're literally <laughs> training your replacement. That's all it is. Like, they're gonna try I, to, what? And so my mom would legit, like, not train people. She'd be like, no, I'm unfortunately, like, I'm not able to do that this time. I have a lot of work going on. She's not able to train people. If I what train people, I let is, things out. Yeah, like, what you're not going to do is, like, make <laughs> someone who's better than me, like, just okay. because you don't want to pay as that's much what I'm as, saying. you know, Before, you know, you over here letting me go, and then and so all of a sudden, they're, you know what I'm saying? No. And that's the reason mm-hmm. why I don't think my parents were quiet quitters. No. They were hustling, working hard. Honestly, shout out to them, because honestly, that's, they're the ones that kind of created the work ethic, but... Me being a millennial now, low key looking at work and seeing how seeing it for but what I feel it is, like I'm even, not no. Even if you t- like, okay, so let's say I feel like even in a sense that's still quiet quitting. Even if they still showed up every day and gave a hundred percent, like I feel like in other way, even if their work didn't suffer. They quiet quit in other ways. They're like, quite quitting I'm in pretty life. sure, like, I know like, my grandma for sure, like, she used to complain about her job for years before she retired. She definitely sh- still showed up every day and gave 100%. Don't get it twisted. But I definitely feel like her not, con- her choosing to not fuck with her coworkers, that's low-key quiet quitting. You know what I mean? Coming mm-hmm. into the workplace and choosing to just be in your own bubble and go home every day, whether you're still giving 100% is low-key quiet quitting. Because that is was me at one point. But I like, was showing up I mean, to work not talking to none but, of them bitches. But, fuck y'all. But, but I was I'm, still doing my job. But some people understand that work is just work and I'm not here to socialize. I'm here to make that a check and go home. Job it's not in my job description to make friends because those same friends end up snitching on you you don't have a job anymore i don't have friends at work sorry no i don't agree i'm sorry honestly i michelle what do you think you feel like they quite quit or no um so y'all y'all have raised some interesting points Mm -hmm. i think it's different because i think we can say the thing about this generation I feel like we're passionate about different things. I think that there are some people who are just naturally type people where they're going to go 110% in everything they do. I know I've worked in jobs <laughs> with people where I'm just like, we do the same thing. Yeah, why are you, why are so you in here? Yeah. Bringing like bringing projects like somebody will come and be like today is ice cream day name your favorite mm-hmm. ice cream girl why are you leading that topic like you are not a supervisor girl, or a manager girl, why are you making, why are you making us answer writing prompts yeah you know what I mean so I feel like <laughs> in our generation that exists but do I feel like the older generation also quite quit definitely I mean think about all the Nigerians who came here during that time taking jobs that they were not passionate about. You know yeah. what I mean? Not because, oh, they want to be made or they want to drive taxis and be the best That's taxi driver. That's though. That's what I'm saying. But at the same time, it was, they weren't, they were, there was an end to a mean. Mm-hmm. They were doing the bare minimum, doing what they were, needed to do. But you have to think about it. Were they, Michelle? I, I will say yes. Do I feel like people were coming here and making sure they drove the, the this? No, I feel like they were doing the bare minimum. And as soon as they saw the exit to get out and pivot into another yeah. career, the majority of Nigerians did. Absolutely. So, so that's why I say, like, I feel like every generation has those pool of people who are... Because I feel like quiet quitting is a hustling mentality. You're not sitting there just being lazy at your job. No, you're giving 80% to this job because 20% of it is going into hustling and, and, and making sure that you have time for this. You may be at your job. How many people, how many 
of our gener- how many of our parents do we know who were working but in school? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who are working and mm-hmm. still trying to see what they can do to make sure oh their kids are taken care of, leaving their work to drop kids off at school. All that that some there's people who say, "Oh, I never got to see our kids growing up because I was working." A lot of people don't have that experience because they was like, "No, my job would never got that much out of me." Mm-hmm. You know? So I feel like every generation has those pool mm-hmm. of people who are just I, feel like it ex- I just feel like it exists in every generation. I don't think it's something that we created. I feel like we created the name for it. Mm-hmm. And it sounds so taboo that the older generation is like, what is that? The bare minimum is like, y'all was doing the same thing. Shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So I guess my last question in regards to that, like, do y'all feel like quiet quitting is more prevalent among like certain races? Or no, do y'all feel like everyone's it's everybody? doing it? Hmm. Everyone's. Mm-hmm. I think, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I. <sighs> Never mind. No. No. Say how you feel. I say maybe. I, a, I say maybe not among certain races. I think maybe among certain genders. I I really do feel like women sometimes aren't given like the opportunities that they're like meant to be given. So we're kind of forced into quiet quitting. You know what I'm saying? Like like you said, you're being you're being passed up for a practice manager for someone who probably you know you know like wasn't qualified. And so I feel like sometimes like we are forced into mm-hmm. these positions to be like, you know what? We actually have to go seek like employment elsewhere yeah. because we realize that our worth is not being taken serious at this job. And so I would say maybe that. I think that's an interesting way to put it. I agree. Mm-hmm. I would agree, honestly, because I feel like women definitely get passed up. It's so yeah. crazy because I heard a story yeah. about someone told me who I won't say what the job is. Because even when I heard it, I was like, y'all need a lawsuit. <laughs> but <laughs> he was saying how um, somebody had, um, there was a woman who had worked at the company for a long time and she got passed over in a job. And he was offered the position. And I, she felt slighted and she was like, it's a boys club and all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm do you really think so? He was like, well, they like me and she's kind of this and she kind of is like confrontational a lot. And I was like, but why do they like you? Do they like you simply be like, well, we, cause they like you because y'all hang out, y'all drink, y'all do all this stuff together outside Mm -hmm. of work, but that's simply because you're a guy. So y'all have formed this boys club. And as a woman, she doesn't For somebody who knows everything that she does know, and she's worked there so much longer than you. And she's definitely qualified for the position why was she passed over? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And moving forward, I feel her. Do If she decides to fall back and starts exactly. giving less, because it's like, what all is the right. point of her doing all of this and giving her all to hopefully get promoted? Y'all aren't going to promote her? Exactly. Right. No, I'm going to fall all the way to the fucking back and y'all going to start, y'all going to start getting the, the player that y'all want. No, I definitely agree with that. Because I even remember I had a friend, she was telling me how like, she just got hired on a new job or whatever. But the lady who hired her was actually leaving. She was an NP she had applied for a position that she was supposed to get and they hired somebody who didn't have as many years experience as her and did not have her NP. And she was like, I'm out of here. And she left. And I'm just like, I, I'm glad that she finally fucking left because I feel like that's a slap in somebody's face when you've been uh, no, somewhere for so long and it you have is. the over qualifications and they hire somebody mm-hmm. like politics, like you had yeah. said as well, like mm-hmm. you have less certifications than me, less experience and they're bringing you in like, I'm leaving and it's at like that point. you can literally do mm-hmm. that position with your eyes closed, and rather mm-hmm. than they're gonna be mm-hmm. struggling forever. And I think it's just, it's like, like, it's what? just companies trying to put a glass ceiling on you, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And it really takes you to be able to break that glass ceiling. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, sometimes the way you break that glass ceiling is to leave that company more, mm-hmm. like you know. So it just is what you, it is. Like, like you said, like we then have to quiet quit. We give eighty percent to this job, give the other twenty to you know finding our next yeah. role. Mm-hmm. Especially if you want to make more money, usually absolutely sometimes in certain like professions the only way you make more money is to job hop to, yeah that's true or oh, just well, you know that's facts well guys we hope y'all tapped in with us in regards to ghosting and quiet quitting we definitely are gonna have to tune in with y'all and figure out how y'all feel about situations because i know i want to hear I some know ghosting y'all stories. Got i do want to hear ghosting right. stories yeah like we definitely gonna have to tap in with y'all about that but anyways guys make sure you guys are following us on instagram tiktok youtube definitely youtube because the thing is like these videos are dropping on youtube so i know y'all want to see us we in the studio looking good like hop in tap in with <laughs> us um but anyways guys this is your girl joy alia signing out Bye, Eric. Bye, y'all. It's your girl, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, I'm tired. Y'all understood my day. I'm just trying out of it. <laughs> yes, it's just Nick checking out. And like uh, Jory said, make sure you follow us on YouTube. Like, that really is a really big thing. If you want to see more content from us, subscribe. That way you get notified. And yeah, bye.
And y'all also, if y'all have any motos or penny chronicles y'all want to share with us, please email us at pettyparty12814 at gmail.com. Please engage with us on all social media platforms. And this is your girl, Lamont signing out. Bye, Bye.